Hello, Ninjago Nation! It is the Ninjago cast with some spectacular special guests. I am Sensei Wolf. I am LJ. I am Mesa. And I'm Sakoda. And today we have probably one of the greatest treats to one of the greatest honors uh, across the Ninjago community. Uh, we are joined by community leaders from across Ninjago. I would like to do a special shout out and welcome uh, Ninja Whip, aka Brayden from Masters of Brig Jitsu, as well as Mine from Bricks by Mine. And what? finally, we have Tommy and Drayson himself, the uh, show owner of Ninjago, joining us to answer your burning questions about Ninjago. Welcome, one and all. It is Thank great you. to have you here. Thank oh, you very hello. much for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for having me here. <laughs> I'm visiting excited? from a far off land. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is so much nicer than Twitter, isn't it? And, and you <laughs> don't get sore from typing. It's it's brilliant. We Thanks are going to make me. sure, Tommy, you only have 240 characters per uh, answer when you talk. So we're going to make, we're going to hard cap you as you talk. We gotta I'm just keep kidding. It real. We're also going to ask you the same question 15 times to make sure you answer it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I want to go ahead and quickly say that Tommy has spent almost your entire time with Ninjago on Twitter answering fan questions for years, whether you're at an airport, you're just feeling like it, you have done wonders for the Ninjago community, keeping us alive, answering our burning questions, sometimes ones that aren't really super essential but are fun to know, but you've yeah. been doing it tirelessly for so long and we all really appreciate what you've done in that regard. And so this is kind of our way as uh, community members to give you a chance to answer those questions in a more uh, open environment, in a more, uh, was it not constructive, but like uh, no, discussion we're, heavy we're environment. Nice. No <laughs> constructiveness here, only no. destructive. No. <laughs> <Baroni>. so, <laughs> well, actually, actually, the whole Twitter thing was my first experiment, you can say, it, with uh, social media. I have not been on Facebook anything like that so when i started it was like oh there's there's this guy who wants to know something about <laughs> ninjago i had joined like a year earlier and suddenly it was like okay i'll i'll answer, answer that and then it just came it started snowballing i would say <laughs> and, mm. and it got to this yeah well we are we are all happy to be here to help you out with those burning questions uh quickly we're going to go ahead and let you all, all the viewers know where you can find us uh, on the social media uh, places. Uh, here at TTV, you can find us at the message boards, the TTV message boards at board.ttvchannel.com uh, to continue further discussions. Um, you can also find us on Twitter at uh, the TTV channel uh, as well. So, and then Mind, Brayden, where can people find you? Uh, so I am on Instagram, bricks.by.mind, on YouTube, bricks.by.mind, three separate words, and then on Twitter, bricks.by.mind, one word. But bricks.by.mind <laughs> everywhere, just a little bit different spacing between all of them. Just to keep it easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. You can find me in just underscore whip on Twitter, as well as Masters of Brick Jitsu on YouTube as well. So. Thank you, thank you. You can find me in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that, that is true. That's a good point. Be careful, because, Tommy, there might be some people who will actually find you in Denmark. So <laughs> They'll be welcome. We, we've located him. Wonderful. We found him. He's in his natural habitat. Wait, why is he watching the Big Lebowski again? <laughs> no. Ah. Uh, Finally, I want to give a huge thanks to LEGO and the LEGO Ambassador Network for setting this up, for letting this happen. It is a great honor to have this happen in general, um, and we appreciate LEGO being the ones to get this started and to help uh, market this as well and spread information. Yeah, so tweeted big about shout it. Out it was very nice. LEGO. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. crazy. So thank you so much. And everyone listening, thank you for listening live. We appreciate you all. Uh, but I think... Uh, Everyone is everyone here is uh, here for some really good answers from the really great Tommy, and I think it's time to jump into it. How, how are we all? Are we all ready for this? 
Yeah. I'm ready. I'm yeah. very excited. Yeah. Get, get ready for a whole bunch of I don't know, man. It was just that what, what we thought at the time. <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to the most. <laughs> so our first topic obviously is going to be about Shima. I'm joking. Yes. <laughs> the burning Where questions are the beavers? About Where are they? Why? What is their what is their what is their history? <laughs> Well, that will be saved for a different stream. I'm sure there's a lot of burning questions about Chima that Tommy would love to answer. But today we are going to start with the ever so popular and most recently released Ninjago season, Ninjago Crystallized. There's a lot of discussion, a lot of questions that came in on Tommy's Twitter uh, regarding Crystallized. But before we ask any specific questions, I would like to open up the floor to Tommy uh, to talk about uh, a couple of things about Crystallized that we may not know much about. Um, as well as other insights and whatnot about crystallized. So, floor is yours, Tommy. Yeah. Well, um, well, I mean, crystallized was really su supposed to be the end of this thing that we started with Wirebrain in, in 2019, second half year. Uh, there was an amb ambition, and that ambition came out of the Ninjago team, the designers, the marketing. Hey, why don't we try to plan a little longer ahead on this one than what we usually do, and then dedicate one uh season uh, or chapter as we started calling it uh, for each of the ninja and then sort of lean into this so obviously there was uh kai saying uh jay cole Nia, and then lloyd at the end so we kind of worked our way through all the ninjas uh, where where they were some sort of focus and there would also be a focus on uh, on their elements of power to some extent um it's hard to make long plans, and sometimes, you know, your faith wavers a bit. Uh, so, for instance, we did do a, a season about uh, uh, Jay, but the focus wasn't really on his el elemental powers. That doesn't mean there wasn't a ton of ideas about that, and I would like to elaborate on that later when we get into, oh, what could have happened, and theories, and, and alternate scenarios, and stuff like that. Um, but it, it, was, it was supposed to sort of be the elemental saga, where we go through each of each of these ninjas and the elements, and then end up with, um, you know, golden power, Lloyd, uh, which would seem like a very, very, very natural uh, conclusion to that. Um, and and obviously one and what what often happens is it's actually up for the nin uh, Ninjago designers and the marketing to pick out who's a, who's going to be our main ninja. And they also come up with a very nice and rudimentary story that we then take to the writers. And then we start building on that. Change stuff around. It's a very fluid process. It very often comes with the, co the concept from the designers first, then goes to the writers, then goes back to the designers. And I'm kind of there in the middle trying to work with the designers on bill on time and then on the writers on LA, LA time. So <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of that going on, um, saying, hey, we, we changed this little thing. Um, and I think you could, you could probably feel that struggle. It sometimes is in there. Um, you know, I, we 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 often get some notes that things aren't exactly perfectly aligned. Um, but sometimes, you know, we we try to balance it. But I think an, a nice instance is um, if you look at the toy sets, it really comes across like, oh, the giggle and the months are the enemies here. Um, the whole thing about. Shintaro up up top is not really present because that's not where the story really takes place. Uh, but we have a very fruitful and 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 good relationship uh, back and forth between writers and the toy designers. So it's it's all this uh, collaboration going on in there. Um, so and, and sometimes by that the upside is hey, at least it looks like the Gekko and Monza bad guys. At least then there's no spoilers in the product, and I think that's. Obviously, you would all agree that's something that's been haunting us forever, and I think it's just, <laughs> it is part of working on a show that has merchandise. All these things come up, um, you know. Mm. Even even one of us and, and Marvel can't handle it, so why would we? <laughs> that is a very True. fair point. I know when the crystallized sets were released, there were a lot of generals that we saw were like, "Whoa, you know." Is that Pythor? That's I mean, Asphira, yeah, like, Harumi. It, we didn't yeah. talk about it at the time because we don't talk about leaks, but every single character pretty much was leaked mm -hmm. before the show's release, and that was a bit unfortunate. And uh, it, is a, it is a double-edged sword, right? Because you want to be, you want to provide the kids the toys to play with that they see in the TV series, yeah. but obviously, mm -hmm. 
it would be better to hey let's not give them harumi let's not give them gamador and stuff like that where you you would then it would come as a complete surprise when it finally happens in the show uh, i i've come to terms with it we can't really control any of that the broadcasting how how it's it's released i think it's it's it is about a, a bit of a matter of closing your eyes while you're working at it and say i will i will i will die on this hill to protect this secret knowing that it will be blown but at least i that's not my mindset when i'm working at it and uh, you know that's also what being still in the writers um, but it, it's it's also a funny thing because obviously now we have you guys watching it and that's where ninjago has been super fortunate to have been around so long that people have grown up with it and you know people are getting smarter <laughs> you know in the beginning we could like oh, that's that's the logic over here those those weapons turns into motorcycle it's fine <laughs> one question that in 2012 or 13 um but then obviously now there's there's a bigger burden on the storytelling and, and stuff like that so we we are aware of that <laughs> but um um but but that's the thing you really we, we we keep having to remind ourselves okay we're doing this for the kids the mm -hmm. kids probably don't really see these spoilers in that way they just want the toys and then hopefully they will they'll they'll like the show and they'll be inspired by the show and then they have the opportunity to actually go and play it out and, uh, you know when when we develop it we do see it as high art like oh my god we're doing the lord's work here hooray <laughs> um so mm -hmm. it is it is about making that engaging story that will inspire uh, kids to go out and, and and play it out for themselves yeah yeah, I, I have that, you know, I, I know what I was like when I was nine years old and, and loved yeah. Star Wars. So it, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Uh, it's something I desperately wanted. Mm -hmm. So that's why I feel it's 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 just very nice to work on something like this because I think we are providing something that helps kids to develop. Sure, they go selling a toy, but that doesn't mean that we don't take our storytelling very seriously. Yeah. Ninjago is blessed and cursed by having a uh, an audience of all ages uh, when the main merchandise is for uh, is for kids. So it's it's a it's a beautiful franchise that balances both uh, throughout the years, and um, we all can appreciate you, Tommy, for doing the best you can uh, to make sure that balance is upheld. So balance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, I have a I have a pot of coffee here. I've, I've heard this this may take a while. <laughs> all right yeah so before we get into uh important and big questions there are two things that uh or three things really that i want to go ahead and get out of the way the first one is there are going to be no questions slash discussion has anything to do with the year 2023 as it stands right now 2023 does not exist that is not a year that we that we even are looking towards everything is this year and in, in the past there there's no future uh, that we are going to be discussing. Obviously, there's a future, but there's no future that we'll be discussing on this uh, podcast. Mostly because Tommy can't uh, for the sake of your job. What do you know, Haley? What do you know? I, I, I don't know anything. Um, and Tommy doesn't either. So that's, we just aren't, aren't going to talk about it. Um, the second thing is, um, Tommy, I know that you said that in your initial tweet, that you everything that is going to be discussed today is not going to be officially canon. Uh, would you like to kind of reiterate why, um, so that we all are are on in know about it? Well, yeah, and uh, you, everyone watching this probably knows my policies on spoilers and stuff like that. That's I've always been very thorough trying to enforce on Twitter. Um, uh, I think it's up for the show, the canon books, to give you the truth. Um, so. Um, Obviously, I could give you a whole lot of answers um, where it's like, oh, now this is the canon, but it's not. What I'm saying today is, you know, at, at least when we're looking backwards, is these were the thoughts that shaped this. That doesn't mean those those uh, thoughts are the canon because uh, obviously there's a, there's a new uh, creative team working on Ninjago and they need to be able to, to establish the canon. Um, that doesn't mean we had ideas on what it could be, but one thing I've learned throughout my all my work is always trust the ideas you haven't had yet. And I think that's that's something that's very important because I may have had an idea and I may have 
told you, I may tell you about it today, and it may actually be a good idea, but that doesn't mean there's a better idea out there. And that's definitely where I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, the new creative team on Ninjago goes with these things. Um, you know, I have my idea on uh, Wu and Gamadon's aging, who are their parents, stuff like that. And maybe we could discuss some of that today, but that that's, doesn't mean that's the truth. I am not in a position to establish canon anymore. And even if I were, were so, it's up for the books and the TV show to do that. It's, it shouldn't happen like as a as a, a left hand thing on social mm -hmm. media or as in a podcast like this. Yeah, awesome. Very and different then... from the traditional approach that we're used <laughs> to in the Bionicle community, but it's an approach I respect. Because the last <laughs> thing you'd ever want is for there to be like a messy contradiction. And then the fan base like is like, well, what, which one do we go with? Tommy's answer or the new creative team's answer? That would be a, a whole mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the answer is the new creative team is right. Okay. There you go. Wonderful. Well, there you go. You got that stated uh, for the audience's uh, knowledge and for kind of as a overarching, this is, this is what this exists for this podcast. And finally, one initial question, just because I saw a lot of people uh, we're a little worried about it, and I just want to make sure this is out there and people know. You were retiring from Ninjago's main story, but are you still working at Lego? I am. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I need to see my family, and I, I am, I, you know, me leaving Ninjago is, is kind of, there's two reasons for it. I'm working on a rather big project that's yet to be announced. So one thing, I wouldn't have the time to do two shows at, at, at one time. Uh, the, the, the new one is just, it's, it takes up a lot of time. So that was just an impossibility. And I've been working on that for several years at this point while kind of finishing off Ninjago. The other one was, hey, it is, and I've said that on other interviews and it's part of Ninjago's DNA that it needs to renew itself. It needs to shake it up. And this was the time to do it. So this was also where I felt, well, I have too much work anyway. I think Crystallize is just like the, the perfect way to, for me to step away. And now, you know, obviously other people can come in and, and do some of the work that I used to do. So I think it, it's, it was just a very organic way to, to transition out of Ninjago. And I, I feel really good about the way I, uh, we did that. Wonderful. Fair enough. Good, good. But uh, look right. for more projects coming from me and Lego in the not too distant future. New Very show. Exciting. <laughs> Super exciting. <laughs> That's always good to hear. Yeah. yeah. That is that is the only 2023 <laughs> and beyond know. content that'll be talked about on this podcast. <laughs> is that there there is more coming from Tommy um in the future so which is awesome as or more from tommy from in lego in the future which is important to know <laughs> live chat Shima and, too. And also, I'm, write, I'm writing a children's book called farty and toad um, hey. that. <laughs> <laughs> tommy ever so busy so okay so crystallized tommy do you have any specific like lore related things that have to do with crystallized that you would like to go into further depth about. It could be about any of the characters. It could be about, you know, the deep lore. It could be about the overlord. It could be about the balance. Is there anything that you really want to go into initially to kind of get this ball rolling? Yeah, um, thoughts on all those things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we need. I think we need to touch upon all of them and probably in some yeah. depth. And you know, there's definitely thoughts that went into it, which uh, it's it's implied in the show, but it's not specifically stated in the show. Like around the Overlord, you know, we should talk about Vengestone. We should talk about uh, re returning characters and and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, definitely, what what we've set out to do out to do with with Crystallize was uh, not the Ninjago story to end all Ninjago stories. Mm -hmm. It was more to get to the point where okay. We are back to a healthy status quo. Well, this is my uh, version of a healthy status quo, where this is if, if this was the last time I were to ever see these characters again, I would be comfortable where where we left them off. They have been through a lot. Um, they deserve a long and happy life. Um, I, I'm secretly hoping that they won't be because I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen <laughs> in the future. Um, but at least if 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 
if a person were to step at the away way at this point, I I really wanted the, the characters to be in that place where it's like, oh my god, these guys these guys made it. They can actually like myself, <laughs> kind of <laughs> retire and feel good about what they did. Um, and I, yeah, it's it's probably pretty evident from the last episode where you know the. Uh, it's Braggy, Braggy's brilliant writing, but I think he kind of channeled both of us when we was like, okay, yeah, Gamadon talking to, to and about that plant, yeah, that's that's basically how we feel about it at this point. Um, so, in yeah. this life, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have come to the kind of uh, conclusion that I probably love that song a lot more than a lot of other people. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> There's what absolutely nothing. Uh, there's nothing at all wrong with the song. I think people just have some 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 thoughts on its usage, but it's a good yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and uh, let's just touch touch upon that because this was something that Bra uh, Braggy and I actually discussed, and he was on the pro. Uh, let's do the overture. Let's do the overture, and I was like, I kind of like that song. <laughs> um, and I feel like the song has something to say, and I also discussed it with a. Uh, 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 Oh, I always get the names mixed up. Kramer and Vincent, um, Jay Vincent and Michael Kramer. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we also discussed it, and and they they kind of like the idea that yeah, that thing is what's gonna tie it up. It's also gonna be a little different from what we usually do uh, with you know the big orchestral thing at the end. So in and you know like it or not, it's definitely it was my, it was my choice to to put it on those end credits. So I'll take full credit or full blame for that. I, I love the song and I felt it had something to say that the overture mm -hmm. didn't. We all know that one. I did see the edit on online where a fan uh, put on the overture and it's like it just it's perfectly. <laughs> Mess and, uh, up. I mean, the overture works with everything. Flashbacks mm -hmm. as well. Beautiful. I Mess love up. That. How many videos? How many edits of the crystallized <laughs> ending did you make? And Tommy, have you seen any of them? Because this man, this man kind of lost it for a little while so, there. I, I forget. I, no, I think um, Speedy, Speedy the Cat, um, famous Ninjago community uh, artist. She was like, "Wouldn't it be funny if you like overlaid the dance of doom from the Ninjago <laughs> movie onto the ending in lieu of Inner Steel?" And then I was like, "Oh, that'd be funny." And then I did that. And then I did approximately let's see, 20, 28, 36, 44, 52, 6, 64 uh, other videos of just random popular songs just copy pasted <laughs> over Inner Steel, <laughs> uh, featuring such great hits as All Star, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I think I saw a few. I didn't know they came from you, or I would have wanted you to be excluded from this. Have you done the walk of life with dire straits? And if not, you need to do that for me. It's on, it's on the list now. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was a funny thing. It just kind of became a community joke for a while. <laughs> Yeah, some people have a tendency to start those. Right, Sakoda? Um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that was, that was great. So, any anyone here have any, like, specific crystallized questions that you would like to ask in this in this moment? I mean, I have a Initially. bunch, but I don't yeah. want to step over people's, uh, people's toes uh, in the Twitter sphere. Mm -hmm. I mean... Could we talk about Overlord? Yeah, let's talk about the Overlord. All right. Anything? Do you just want me to blurt it out, or I mean, I guess like specific, the, specific angle on it. I guess the the, the big question is like question. is like go what? For it, Sakata. Go for it, Sakata. Because we have a question from Duck Bricks on Twitter, and he was asking uh, about the Overlord. What was the idea behind the crystal motif? Were they dark matter crystals from like the ones from the Woo Crew app, or have the crystals always been a part of the Overlord's power? Okay, yeah, I mean this this is this is something I definitely wanted to get at, and it's okay. So maybe I'm gonna be a smart at it, but then okay, that's that that's what I'll leave behind. <laughs> but, you know, uh, 
So back in the day, in 2011, uh, we made a little show called Ninjago, where the, the, the land was created from four weapons of gold that had elemental powers. And those elemental powers didn't make sense. They were fire, ice, earth, and lightning for some reason. No water in there, um, no air. Um, but th that's what we felt was like, cool at the time. It's like, oh, I can do something with ele electricity. And I did my little sketches of Spinjitsu and like, great, you know, what do I do with air and water? Meh, we we're not going to do that. So that's what we did at that time. Uh, and no one questioned it. <laughs> it's just like, okay, um, maybe because the audience were younger back then, but it was just like, okay, apparently you could come up with these myths. Then since then, we've had a long history of just introducing elements like, oh, dark matter, bench stone, uh, the gold from crystals peak, the chrono steel, the, the, uh, the crystals from Shen's cave and those crystals from the islanders. And we've never really provided any sort of explanation for it. Um, but as, as fans get older, smarter and more inquisitive uh, mm -hmm. and, and eloquent, then those things that are that is just something that is kind of thrown into a, a children's cartoon because it looks great it's going to be fun that becomes something that you want an explanation on and you know i'm uh, I, I and i do find the topic in, in interesting and and fascinating because oh if you can come up with backstories on all these things but the truth is there really isn't anything it's it was more like oh yeah we need to do something for this a season, I worked with the designers and we came up with like, oh, the crystallization of the weapons of Spinjitzu turning into the weapons of destruction rather than creation. Isn't that great? And, you know, then Braggy came up with the idea of, oh, this is how we bring uh, Harumi back. It's crystals, it's overlords. So I would, I would dare to say there's no bigger thoughts behind it. However, <laughs> um, that doesn't mean there can be. And I yeah. think we should talk about that when we come into the Overlord and stuff like that, because I have, I have, and I actually found this today. I thought it was lost, but I searched through an old hard drive and I found the Ninjago Canon that I wrote in, in 2009. Um, I wanted it to be, be part of the story Bible, uh, but the Hegemans said like, this is all fine and great, but don't, because we don't want to be held into it, some sort of logic that we come up with now. And we definitely don't want to be in a situation where we accidentally spill it or something like that. It shouldn't be in the Bible. Uh, and we, we can change that as much as we want later. And that well, was very wise words, in my opinion. Um, it turns out that like 80, 90% of what, we, what is in that canon actually happened, but in greater detail. Uh, but I think that's, you know, that's part of the whole philosophy of uh, trust the ideas you haven't had yet. Uh, you shouldn't spill it, and that's why I've been yeah. so careful not doing that on Twitter or in any other thing. Uh, but obviously now, since I'm, I it's at this spill point, the beans. This is just <laughs> speculations, right? And, and from me at this point, it, it it has no bigger value than that because yeah. I'm not establishing canning canon anymore. Um, Wonderful. Well, then I think. Uh... Spill the beans on the Overlord. Do you is there any part of the Overlord that you weren't able to share with us in the story that you think is important for us to know? Well, I mean, now we go into speculative territory. So yeah, let me just awesome. reiterate again: not canon. However, yeah, not yeah. Canon. thoughts. <laughs> um, so, and I think we got we touched upon it a little in uh, in Seabound because there we learned there was more to this creation myth of Ninjago than we were led on to. I mean, even before we went in uh, creating that season, I would think, oh, Ninja, oh, first Benditsu Master created this entire realm. But what we learned that season is it basically it comes to a ball of water and then fights some guys and they have help from some other guys and then raises a plot of land. So there's always a myth behind the myth. And that's, that's one of the things I, I love about the Overlord. Uh, because how how did he come into this world and 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 what's that all about? And and what we learned in uh, the Gold Master was that oh, uh, Benjitsu Master fought him and there was there was the Stone Army and the land was split in two and golden things. But even even in the artwork of of that sequence, which was told by Asidius in the Serpentine Library, 
there's no golden mech. And that's, this is the one of the things that I think is fascinating about myth. And you'll call me out on this, LJ or Mesonac. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of this is created in retrospect. It's, it's retrofit. But that's, that's the thing about myth, all right? Um, so when you're a kid, you're told like, that the, the, the moon is made of green cheese and you accept that. But then later you you wanna you know more so there's a there's a myth and there's a, probably the truth behind the myth. So my thought was I, I wonder if that battle between first Benjitsu Master and the Overlord actually ever happened. Um, I think that was an event where he was trying to get rid of his own side and that just totally backfired and he had to sacrifice half of the land he created. Um, so. And that's what's implied by what uh, what uh, the Overlord tells Garmadon, your powers were a gift from me and crystallized. Um, so basically, uh, you see what I'm getting here. So yes. they, they yeah. thought Overlord kind of seeped in to the land, saturated it. Now there's the good part and there's the bad part. Maybe Vengestone, maybe Dark Matter, maybe that, maybe that was a product of that. And... So Go, go ahead. Your speculation, because I'm not, I just want to make sure I'm following. Mm -hmm. you, you speculated that the battle may not have actually happened and that he was just trying to get rid of his Oni side. Yeah. So the Overlord would be the Oni side of the first Spinjutsu Master. Yeah. I like and, that idea. Yeah. I like, <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> and then how, how does the Stone Army then make sense, right? Good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but, and this is where you, you just have to give writers freedom to, uh, you know, come up with stuff. Because, okay, if, if I'm then to justify that, and I will admit that wasn't the thought at the time, probably. Um, I think I've been talking about, I've been talking a lot about the good karma of the series and stuff like that. That sometimes things fall into your lap and, and it's just con it just connects. So if I were to go back and say, okay, I, can, I need to make sense of that event. So here's uh, the first Benjitsu master had then created a thousand statues out of clay, which he would do with uh, the only form of himself. And then he would be able to kind of destroy each of these because they wouldn't be as, as strong. Maybe that's what the final battle is. However, in that process, these guys hardened into impervious material, and now he has this, he's basically unleashed the, the evil part of himself upon this world. Mm. Yada, 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 Overlord, defeat, splitting of, of, of Nijago. That also gets us into, okay, the whole land is saturated by Overlord. And what then happens is the, the snake bites uh, Garmadon, that's how he gets the only part. Because it never made sense to me that uh, Spendi the first Spendizu Master would create like an evil and a good son. Obviously, the whole thing yeah. about uh, getting rid of splitting his powers uh, kind of makes sense. Um, but, and, and you see by that, you know, the whole thing, and I, this is why I love the react, react, re, re kind of um, re reactive retroactive lore creation which we've been we've been doing a lot is oh no it was all the the overlord's master plan um that that came into fruition uh, but speculation obviously but it's there's something very very interesting about going in, in about it in that way um and and you know and, and while we're at the edit uh you know We've always been super elusive about the timeline. When when did stuff happen? Uh, in in my development, I've just always said like, all right, we start ten thousand years ago because that's that's easy to to work with. Um, then there's the, the battle with Wajira. Then there's the the battle with the Overlord or whatever that was. And this was also the sort of event where the first Bajitsu master realized, well, I mean, I'm probably too powerful here. So he would then imbue the rest of his powers into giving that to the elemental masters. And then at some point later down the line, he would, I'm um, saying, create a Wu and Garmadon as his two sons because it's like now he, wa he's, he wants to become more mortal. So he gives the final part of his power to these two 
two two sons. Um, and I, in my mind, there never was any mother involved in that. It was just like, okay, this is his ultimate creation. He creates these two sons, and right. uh, and you know, but but obviously, logically, there would be a a, a mother involved, and uh, that's you know, it's all also been implied in that. Uh, What's it called? Book of Sanjitsu. Yeah, Book of that's one. But obviously, since this is written by, that book is written by Wu, and there's a portrait of a woman. Yeah. But he doesn't know who it really is. see her. No, it's, yeah. it's like, and as I said a million times, sometimes the question is just more interesting than the answer. Um, but, but you know, I've seen a lot of speculation. It's it's Pistaki, something like that. Hey, I could make that work. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like, when do we get to that point where oh that's the thread we want to pull now? Um, so uh, you you mentioned the timeline real quick, and I had a question I was wondering about. Did the Oni warlords come after the first Fujitsu Master before the split or after? Did you ever think about that? Uh, I would think that was before the split. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, I would say very soon after he kind of left the uh, first realm, they tracked him down. Um, and then, obviously, the stuff happens, and and Bistaga turns on the two uh, only warlords. Yeah. Uh, uh, I you know I I I've made I've made this timeline so many times over the years just from memory. <laughs> I always throw it away because you know it's 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 something I don't want to be held to. And I think it's the most more important thing is if if I can feel I can recreate it, like I remember it, I would be constantly questioning it. And and then refining it by recre recreating it. So that that's been the process process of that. Um, okay. Cool. cool. So okay. Any, any any comments on what I just said is is you know I mean I think if you can poke holes in it, that's I think that's interesting. Um, I mean your your approach it, makes sense. I think um, the ideas are cool. I have I have basically no holes to poke in the ideas about the overlord. Yeah. I like those. You know, there there's some things to poke in terms of like philosophies, but I think it I think it works very well for you and the product. So, to each your mm -hmm. own. Like I, as a fan who's very detail oriented, I would love a timeline. You know, <laughs> I, I would really like a timeline. But I get why yeah. it's not. A I, I'm a very I'm a very big fan of that that Overlord idea that he's a part of the first Fujitsu Master. He split off. It plays perfectly in this like. If mm -hmm. one side is too strong, it will equal out um, the balance yeah. aspect of all things, yep. which mm -hmm. is also like a theme we talked a lot about. And I really like that wrong. about Ninjago. <laughs> yeah. Was there um, any more about the Overlord we were curious about? Mm, I have a question about the Oni Temple, which kind of goes hand in hand with the Overlord a bit. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so the the map of Ninjago is kind of like a yin yang symbol. Um, the Temple of Light is like the light on the Dark Island. And the Oni Temple is the darkness on the uh, on the Ninjago continent, basically. Yeah. Now that the te the Oni Temple got destroyed, would that have like consequences on the world? Like because we saw in in the Dark Island comics that when they mm -hmm. like corrupted the Temple of Light, that had like created earthquakes and huge tidal waves and all that yeah. with the destruction of the Oni temple and crystallize have any effects <laughs> uh we so we're slowly getting into 2023 territory okay. yeah no, no but, but just like what's your opinion, opinion on that you know <laughs> from from as as much of a heavy ending crystallized was oh that balance is totally yeah. <laughs> so uh I don't know what will happen, uh, but if if you follow that logic, uh, oh yeah, stuff's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> so in regards, uh, to but, the but I, can, I can also I can I can also make make the uh, the other argument that wow, what they did really just drove all that evil out of Ninjago, and now there's just balance and peace forever. Um, <laughs> so you know. What whatever happens next happens next. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> so so in terms of the balance, yeah. 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 In terms of balance, they're either screwed or they're okay. We just yeah. don't know in this time. Yeah. Why not? Fair enough. I'm just like, ah, they had five minutes of peace. <laughs> Wasn't that nice? And they had a great song. 
uh, that shouldn't be replaced mm-hmm. by any other piece of music. Uh, <laughs> enjoy it, bye. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. All right. I what also else? trying to think of you mentioned the Great Devourer bit Garmadon and it gifted him his Oni set or at least enhanced a lot of his Oni uh capabilities and whatnot. So how does that lead then into Lloyd and his Oni form? Like I am I'm guessing because he he get his power is gifted from the Great Devourer, which kind of enhanced it. Um, and then he just kind of has that as a part of him. And then Lloyd has only blood, so he's able to kind of like a is it like a true potential for him? Uh, or... Well, I mean, obviously uh Lloyd being Gamadon's son, something would be have been passed on to him uh, mm-hmm. from him. Um so you know it's it's interesting to think about it because if you think about like there's, there's the dragon and there's the Oni. All right. Mm-hmm. First Pendizo Master clearly picked the side of the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, however, he he did not he didn't he didn't invest himself in that conflict too deeply in in the first realm because he left it. He went to Ninjago, it's like couldn't deal with it. Then the Oni came after him. Um so I guess in you know, Oni and, and Dragon ran in him. Um say he got rid of his own side, created two sons. Okay, they they they're all dragon now. Um, but um, then Garmadon gets bitten by the devourer. He's only his dragon now. There comes a human element into it, which which is is uh, Misako, and then okay, that's Lloyd. So he is a he is a thin down version or an amalgamation of of three different elements now. You know, mm-hmm. human own dragon. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where I'm going with that, but I mean that yeah. that's. What, that's what Lloyd is. Um, yeah. and it's, that's just, I guess, biology. If it makes sense to talk about that. Um, yeah. No. I mean, I think it's the. I think that th- there is a lot of confusion in the fandom, mm-hmm. at least in terms of like discussion, as to wh- what is the line drawn between Great Devourer and Oni Power, because mm-hmm. there was a there was a belief that um, you know Garmadon was only the way he was because of the Great Devourer. Then Sons of Garmadon was like, no, there's this other thing going on. And the Great mm-hmm. Devourer was just an accelerant or like yeah. a, a steroid out injection, in you know? And, and that was the idea and my idea for a great long while until it's like, oh, wait a minute. Um, but but just think about like the beauty of it, right? Because, okay, uh, Great Devourer is basically uh, in, infused with the Overlord. It bites Garmadon. Uh, the snake keeps growing. It starts devouring. Gamadon gets the four weapon of Spinjitzo. He slays the devourer. Now the ooze from that kill seeps down and it reactivates the, own, uh, the, the stone army. So it's all devourer all the way, and so overlord all the way through. Yeah, you know, that's true. It, yeah, it, they're, they're giving back what what he he took from them, right? Um, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, what first Benjamin Master took from them. So, I mean, I love pulling all these little threads together. Um, and obviously, it becomes too much for a show to, unless we are making this very, very canonized and very, very much for an audience who sees everything. But again, we keep have to have to re- remember that. Okay, this is for a kid, and we probably lose I don't know, thirty thirty percent of of the kids every year because. They they discover something better like music or dancing or you know you um there's it's a very different time now from when I was a kid where it's like okay there's a few things there's Star Wars over there then there's the Smurfs over there I guess that's it I love both like but right now <laughs> you, can, you can go anywhere and so as soon as a, a, a season of Ninjago ends there's just so much good content out there where you can go to and and obviously. That's that's part of of, of the, the battlefield that we're playing in, um, but and and why we we need to keep this fresh and and new and introduce new ideas, new writers, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Good, good. All right. Um, any? Do you have any other questions regarding the Overlord? I think. I don't think so. I think uh, Brayden yeah. has a question regarding uh, some Venstone buyer. 
Oh yeah, we got some <laughs> buyer stuff, Tommy. You knew this was coming. Revenge stone buyer. Revenge <laughs> buyer. Oh man. All right. So we have a question from Ninja Man two eight five over on Twitter, and he asks, "What was the process of creating the overarching Vengestone buyer plot line? When it was first mentioned in Master of the Mountain script, did you all know who it would be? Did you guys have an idea of how the season would play out? Also, what was the goal for it to be in twenty twenty two? That's his question." Um, well, I mean, the goal for the reveal to be in 2022 was basically we knew we had at least five chapters to talk about. And then there's the island that kind of sits some weird way in between, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, sometimes you, you, you work with the nails that you're given, and sometimes that is a little limited budget. <laughs> then you, you go and do something and say, hey, yeah, well, we're going to tell you a bit of a detour here. Um, but I guess when when we... When we came up with the idea of Shintaro and the Vengestone buyer and that whole thing, um, that was more a idea that we need we need to put the ninja in a situation where they're they have their backs against the wall. So what better than put them inside a a, a mountain of Vengestone? Um, and we had the idea, which comes from I guess Ursula Le Guin or something like that, where like you know the perfect society is driven on the backbone of these people in the mind minds. Um, so it, it would make sense that you know this evil king up there, uh, he it's he's he's getting all his wealth from the people that he is uh, he's sub, uh, subjecting to this. So what we didn't have any particular idea on who the bench store stone buyer was. That's just one of those. Hey, we'll figure that out. Let's figure that out as we go along, um, <laughs> and then we get to crystallize. And you know, we had several on the table, uh, but then uh, Braggy came. Well, okay, let's back to crystallized. Very foundation here. Um, we know from the Ninjago team, golden power. We wanted a four-headed dragon. It's gonna be gold. This is a Lloyd season. Okay, go develop. Okay. <laughs> then we do that, uh, and then sort of my mind is going, okay, if then then this is, this is a Lloyd season. Our hands are forced in a good way, where there's got to be some Garmadon, there's got to be some Overlord, because if this is the end of the whole thing, got to be Overlord. At least that was it, it in my mind. And then Braggy came up with, uh, I think, five different ideas, um, and Harumi was one of them. It's like, well, you know, Harumi bringing Harumi back. If we can do that in a in a good, sensible way, uh, that makes fantasy sense. That's something I say a lot. Fantasy sense. It doesn't need, <laughs> need to make complete sense. It's not science. Mm -hmm. it, it just needs to be fantasy sense. Um, then that's interesting. That's a good plot twist. It has a lot of resonance with Lloyd. There's something that we can use and exploit there. Then we go back to the design team, have discussions about that. You know, how does that mm -hmm. feel with Lloyd, what they're going? And, you know, oh, the whole crystal, purple... Ah, it kind of fits with the overlord, so it's 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 this big mishmash of development. I, I forgot what the question was again, but uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it, it it was you very it much was... answered the question about the Venstone buyer and how that plot came to be. So yeah. I can follow that up with a question from Overlord X, uh, saying so you kind of answered why you brought back Harumi. Um, so what were the like you know the decisions behind bringing her back and some of what she would be playing into crystallized I mean it was it was the the idea about those scenes where she's watching the ninja and she was there the whole time um she's there at Shintaro she's there in the rice fields when the battle misdemeanor that's a very old idea i had um about uh Kaithar is always there. Mm. He has been <laughs> in any scene in all the seasons you've seen since seen since you saw him last time. He's just been invis invincible, invisible, sorry. And if a ninja trips, it may actually be because they fell over Pythor. Mm. <laughs> um, so we just took that idea and then oh let's let's use that on Harumi and show those scenes that you've seen before. But here's that slightly different perspective that if the cameraman has over been over here, he would have seen her. But yeah, no, we didn't know when we were riding Master of the Mountains that she was over behind that pillar. I wish we were that smart. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> it worked. It, yeah. We, we all said it worked out very well in that scene because like Lloyd was yep. so 
so afraid of princesses in that moment, and there was one in the room. They alerted him. Yeah. <laughs> what were you mentioned? Like there were there were multiple concepts for the Vengestone buyer that weren't Harumi. Yeah, I mean we we went through everyone, right? And and also the idea of the Vengestone. Okay, so what's what's it what's it used for? Um, so when when we actually had our workshops kick off on uh, the the story of of crystallized, uh, I and and the designers in Billund had a completely different opening. We knew that we needed to bring Nia back in some way, but what the kind of the original pitch was that or Nia is out to sea, she's somehow lost it. She's f forgotten where, who she is. She's becoming stronger and better than she ever was, but he's, she's also becoming this force of nature that is doing this spinjitsu in the middle of the sea. I was like this great vortex, and it's it's drawing Ninjago back together. The Dark Island oh. Ninjago is coming together. Oh my God, it's gonna be collided. It's, it's a lot of the ideas that were in uh, the Dark Island thing, actually. But it's like, okay, can, can we take those and make those better? And uh, okay, they're, they're bringing the temples together. Uh, dark matter will spill over from the dark island into Ninjago. So you can see it's basically the same ideas, but just in a in a different thing. Uh, but we thought giving the near the agency to want to bring herself back was just like beautiful. And and uh, and I think uh, Braggy's be beautiful writing really pulled that off. Uh, but even in 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 that scenario. It's also okay. What is that bench stone used for? Has a bad guy been carrying this bench stone to dump it into the sea to somehow mess with Nia's mind, to make her create that? And who is the bad guy? We don't, you know. So we we nothing is set in stone when we we start out this. Uh, we we know what some of the toys will be because we've been working on them. They look great. Designs from brilliant villains are coming in, and we all love it. And yes. I can. I want to watch this on screen, but what's the logic behind it isn't always set. Um, but Fair enough. If, if you look at Crystallize, it's it's it is the uh, it is the structure of Return of the Jedi. First, they go yeah. to uh, rescue Han Solo, then all that stuff happens, and then the Death Star is coming in. That's the Crystal Island, and and Luke goes on his own way. That's Lloyd. So the whole thing is there. The father is dying. He's done. Yeah, we did talk <laughs> about that on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful structure in that movie, and it doesn't get all the credit it should. I love it. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, so I don't think we have any specific questions that we cataloged about Harumi past the one that the best the two that were asked. I think she's like the big elephant in the room, I think, <laughs> where a lot of people in the community have, I mean, I'm sure, you know, different like polarizing thoughts, even as far back as Sons of Garmadon about her as a character. Something I would, I'm dying to know this. You personally, in your opinion, how do you like see the character of Harumi and where she ended up? Yeah. Just your, your opinion. All right. Yeah. So taking one step back, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, so we, by interacting with you guys over the years, we've been very uh, aware, you know, I'm talking about the whole Nijago community. We've been very aware of how polarizing uh, Harumi is. Some love her, some don't. But me personally have never understood the love because like she was, she was evil, man. <laughs> you, see that? <laughs> you know, I can, I can see it in the beginning, but she's just calculating and backstabbing. And what's the redeeming feature? I never really got that. But, you know, the Higgins did a wonderful job setting up a character you would fall in love with and then kind of pull the rock. Uh, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was just great. Um, but, but then, um, and then on, online, I've also been kind of adamant, like, hey, 
give it up, man. Rumi's dead. You know, yeah. you saw what happened. <laughs> yes. I, yes, you But did. Tommy, if you yeah. stand on top of a building and the building drops, I'm will just you saying, if it, if it drops perfectly straight, you can <laughs> just kind of surf the building. Have, Meso, when was the last time... Don't try this at home. When was the last time you were on top of a building when it went... <laughs> You just have to jump at the perfect time when it. <laughs> I also adopted the grappling hook theory. Like when the smoke like covered, she was like. <laughs> no, but but seriously, when when I said those things, I wasn't lying. I yeah, believe no, no, the time she said. However, then Bregy comes up with an idea and like, yeah, let's 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 work with that. Uh, and and I would still venture. I mean, she is dead. She was brought back by the Overlord. Apparently, he has that power. Makes <laughs> <laughs> me sense. Um, and and there was a there was a crystal that showed up in her hand. It's fantasy. Don't 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 ask too much. Go mm -hmm. oh, away. <laughs> uh, so so obviously, you know that's that's what's going on in in our minds. And then we were very very aware and maybe too hyper aware of of what people thought of, of, of Harumi as a character. So we actually felt like, okay, we made the decision to go with Harumi now. How do we kind of conclude her? Right. And and I was I was going back and forth on this, and we all were. And where we sort of ended up was, hey, why don't we why don't we make this thing where it's actually up to people themselves to decide? This is the same thing as I have my my opinion on the ninja's ages. Um, so, is she redeemed? Is she not redeemed? I mean, she does turn on the Overlord in the very last minute when she learns a greater truth about him. But in my mind, that does not redeem her from what she did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there, there's there's a whole lot of things. And so, but what we tried to do in that end scene was same as we did with Ronin in the uh, end of Seabound. Well, he's there, but he's right next to the commissioner. So for the audience to be able to read their character that they either love or hate in two different ways, well, maybe she's out there on forced leave because she needs to help fix uh, the stuff she made, or <laughs> maybe she's completely redeemed and everything's fine. You know, uh, and I know it's, all, all, it's our responsibilities as storytellers to, to, to come up with conclusions, but in this case, it, it was just, I felt more important to leave that up to the individual to come up with things and you can you can see you know Lloyd is smiling at her well is that a gratitude for hey you know you actually if it wasn't for you we wouldn't have won at all um, or is it hey we're totally a couple now you know that's <laughs> not up for Michael to, to <laughs> his desire um, but I think we can all agree they have a very complex relationship. <laughs> uh, yeah, you <laughs> that's for say. sure. Yeah. <laughs> they are, they are, they're, you know, basically adoptive brother and sister, so that doesn't make it any less complicated. <laughs> and the whole, the whole Amadon family is just a weird mix-up of... <laughs> oh, is, is, is uh, Misako and Wu now a couple? You know, <laughs> oh, that's oh, my that brother's old wife. That she stole from me <laughs> by forging that that letter. So yeah, yeah, complicated. Is that why we don't see Misako so much? Is because you don't want to deal with the whole Wu Misako <laughs> <laughs> struggle. I think we see Misako as much as we do, and in my mind, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but in my mind, Misako and Wu, man, they're 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 a good old people couple. I love it. <laughs> So in your, in your opinion, for how you see her, not canon, Harumi isn't easily redeemable? Yes. I mean, actually in the book, um, what's it called? Um, um, yeah. The, the Harumi yeah. diary thing yeah. book? Yeah. Um, there's, there's a scene where she meets Gamadon for the first time. Uh, he is brought in to be pardoned by the Emperor of Ninjago. Uh, obviously, he's in his sensei. He's not Gamadon yeah. anymore. This happens after the end of twenty episode twenty six. Uh, so he is brought in and getting pardoned by the emperor. You know, you did this thing for us. You get a second chance. He goes up and starts his karate school or whatever. And uh, uh, out of the silent fist, 
So he gets an official imperial pardon. I don't see that for Harumi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but no in my opinion, uh, maybe a new series, series will deal with that. Maybe it won't. But uh, it, it's mm. it's definitely a, an interesting question. Mm. But and call me a coward. I just I wanted to leave it open open to the audience to figure it out for themselves. It seemed that a lot of people took it the the other way than it was intended. This was an invitation <laughs> to see her get her comeuppance, or it was an invitation to see her redeemed. Uh, but a lot of people seem to have read it differently. Fair enough. I think that's very useful insight. Mm -hmm. I think I yeah, think the yeah. reason a lot of people saw it in a particular way was because she was at the monastery, and like, yeah, yeah. obviously, friends, like we could see, basically. like, oh, she she's trying, she's there to help rebuild the monastery that and she blew up um mm -hmm. but i feel a lot of people interpreted that it's like it's like it's like if someone what's what's a good analogy for this it's like if someone beat up a dog and then as punishment no. they went to go feed the dog it's like i don't know if i trust that person near that dog anymore i don't or I like really that, want... or like or like the, the ninja looking at her like and Lloyd's like, it's okay. She does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it's also what, what caused some confusion is like she was at the end helping rebuild the monastery with all like the ninja's friends, but none of the other villains were there, like none of the other generals or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, that, so that leads it into seemed another... like she's specialed out. <laughs> another another question that we can ask Tommy is what happened to the generals in the end of Crystallized? Do you have, yeah. like, is there any concept that you have about what happened with, with them? And... I, I, I was a bit surprised that a lot of people ask that question because to me it's, yeah. it's fairly obvious um so the last time we see them they've lost yeah, their weapons yeah. they've lost their powers they're incapacitated in some way and their their army's gone and they're hugely outnumbered you know it's fairly obvious what's going to happen without showing it it's yeah um well at least to me there's this expression about it never show a sandwich being made on film because everyone knows how a sandwich has been made. So it's not something that we felt we needed to do. Like, obviously, they're probably in Cryptarium right now, in my mind. Um, yeah. But Spe uh, Special so question about, for me personally, about Mr. F. Um, in your <laughs> mind, is he still... Is he still in one piece, or did the <laughs> sign completely squash him? <laughs> he's, he's Mr. P now, right? Oh, Mr. okay. <laughs> Mr. Pancake? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, well, I, I don't. I, you know, again, I think it's up for to interpretation. Uh, so, yeah. did <laughs> did Sane kill him, or did he incapacitate him with that sign? You know, it's it's. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I choose to believe that the sign took out Mister F strictly because it would mean that Dareth is continuing to be the most powerful character. Because in Crystallized, <laughs> we all agreed, Chris, like, Mr. F was the MVP for the Council <laughs> for the Crystal King. Like, it was Mr. F with a gun, and he did 90% of the work. And Dareth's <laughs> giant billboard face took him down. It writes itself. I mean, we didn't do you, LJ. It was, mm -hmm. it was it was only thing was on our mind when we wrote that scene is like is he gonna like it? Thank there you, you. Go. <laughs> there you go. Did did the antics ensue? They did. <laughs> they did. The antics ensued a lot. I I have I have even more to ask about Harumi, but I just keep like jumping around like Mr. F. Was that yes. just done for fun? Like we just wanted like you know, we we all know the story about Mr. E and what the the scrapped concepts. Yeah. But like it, it, it like re sparked all that. Like, oh, is he, so now that he's back, are they finally gonna do something with that? Are they gonna like delve into the past? It was just yeah. for fun, right? Like, no, no, not every character that we bring in has a backstory. That was <laughs> it was a robot that Rumi had, and now there's a new version of that robot. I don't know, it's been yeah. remade from parts, or it's just yeah. another iteration of the same blueprint. Um, but uh, but you know what? Well, yeah, it's it's one of those things where um, we come up with stories once in a while that doesn't make it onto screen. And you know, there was this whole idea about okay, so 
Jay has lost Nia, he goes to the place where they kind of finally profess their love for each other. That's the lighthouse. This is also where they have this very little secret of of, of Skybound. Um, you know, he goes to hang out with Echo Sane because, you know, it reminds you of that whole scenario. Um, and then eventually he inspires Echo Sane to go out in the world and, and be the be that man I am no longer because now I'm a bearded weirdo in a lighthouse. So it's like a beautiful idea for a spin-off series about Echo Sane walking the land. And, and kind of learning in the way Sane did back in back in back in the day. Um, so yeah, the, the whole the whole idea about Echo Sane being Mr. F or oh, Mr. E. That's <laughs> it, it, it was a great idea that we didn't do. Yeah. That there you go. A lot. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Cool, cool. Um, uh, very quick I, I question. It was a better answer. Oh. Where like, oh yeah, I'm gonna listen to this. Um, but <laughs> you know, I get. You. Hey, a very quick question about the uh, the light you just mentioned the lighthouse scene. Just because I, I had a little debate with the community about it, was Jay's beard real? Because he rips it off like it's fake. But I thought that was a stylistic choice, just because it was animated. But <laughs> I'm curious to hear your take on if the beard was real or not. I don't know. It was it was a fun <laughs> gag though, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was. It was, a great <laughs> gag. It was wonderful. I, I don't think Jay can get stubble even. <laughs> I think he was just like, okay, now this is who I am. I need to look the part. I'll put on a sweater. And... Yes. yes. I'm sorry. He's a real beard such believer. A great answer, Jake. He didn't even get stubble if he tried. Haley, nice. Haley, do you remember uh, the line that we wrote into the yes. ultimate in Jog? I know. His, his wrong. beard is fake. It's wrong. <laughs> just reminding you, anything I say is on canon here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I fully yeah, expect the, the new writers to confirm or deny this in the next season. <laughs> no, I need, I, need I need them to. It's got to be the focal point of 2023 and beyond. Um, yeah. I, I, I actually, uh, you know, you get a little carried away with these things. Uh, something I didn't manage to do, but the idea was also the lighthouse would be filled up with these birdhouses that he'd built. Just based off of that little one interaction I had with Mike Gladdenswaite on Twitter like several years ago, someone mm. asked like, "What what would Jay's hobby be when he's not fighting?" Uh, and then Michael Gladdenswaite think replied, oh, "I think he's building birdhouses or something." And then I did Aww. a drawing. So, but but all these has, it's it's just fun to play around in your own little world like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, mine, would you like to ask uh, a question from uh, Brick Henry? Uh, sure. So, uh, Brick Henry asked on Twitter, whose ending in Chris Lives were you the most satisfied with? Oh, come again? I didn't catch that. Sorry. Uh, which which character's ending in Chris Lives were you the most satisfied with? Well, I, I like the whole Lloyd Amadon relationship. Um, and I think thematically, um, what we wanted to do with Crystallize, we wanted a theme of coming together. That was sort of the overall thing. This needed to be more about Nijago as a whole uh, rather than any individual characters. Um, so we tried to work in these small character arcs. Um, um, you know, there's something with Skylar and 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 Kai, and and you got you got the, the thing with Jay getting his girlfriend back, and uh, you know all all these little things. But the main thing was it needs to be about Ninjago, and and that's also where the 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 leg or the prophecy of Quanish comes in. It's this wouldn't be a problem to be solved by the ninja themselves. This is about everyone coming together, because it's, it's this beautiful piece of, of puzzle or math that needed to come together to get all these events to click. And that was then prophesized by Quanish the Elder. And then, you know, in, in my and, 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 and Jan's little project is the brother of Fenwig of yeah. Cloud Kingdom. So he kind mm -hmm. of knew something and or had the, the, the power to instigate that opportunity that it would happen. Um, but yeah, and and then while we add that, everyone coming together. Now I, I heard part of your podcast where it's like, there was no everyone. There's people <laughs> missing. <laughs> <A lot. laughs> uh, but obviously this is also where um, sometimes there's practicalities like budgets and yeah. stuff like that. 
uh, and and definitely that's that's a factor there. Um, interestingly enough, three um, D assets they erode like fruit; they rot away. <laughs> so oh, something yeah. like the, the the elemental masters is not something I have access to anymore. Mm -hmm. So ah. for them to show up in that final scene, we would have to recreate all of them. And each of these guys comes with a hefty special effect budget because then you'd want to see their individual powers. You would probably have the one, you would want to see them fight in a particular way. You would want them to say something. And so like the budget gets out of hand in that. Um, so obviously yeah. those were real film assets. They wouldn't work in a no, in a yeah. modern production 3D uh, pipeline. They would have to be recreated or reconverted or something like yeah. that. So a whole lot of money would have to go into for them to make an appearance. Um, and, you know, we didn't have that. So and I was like, ah, we are representing well enough. That's fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, you know, obviously they should have been there. I don't, I don't disagree yeah. with that. But also, that's also the reason why, okay, we have Benthomar there, obviously, because we have him as an asset. He doesn't mm -hmm. say anything, but that's because a, a surprisingly large, uh, I don't know, I think we have Vincent in the chat. <laughs> a lot of the budget actually goes to boys acting. And yeah. if a guy says a line of a named character, we might as well have to him talking throughout the, the entire episode because that's what, that's the cost of that. Yeah. So that's why you can you can have generic uh, Icelander say something, but you probably couldn't have uh, um, um, Ventimar or Ventimar Ventimar. Vaughn, yeah. Yeah. So the moment that a, a character speaks who's a named character, yeah. the, the yeah. price so, just so and uh, it just it's unfortunately it's just part of this production, yeah. and you get those those uh, oh what's the canon explanation for this? questions a lot but a lot of the time it's like well it's 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 just low end production concerns uh yeah. that mm. reason why we didn't do it um, and and speaking of which um um so i love crystallized i have no regrets i have only two things i would like to have changed <laughs> mm. um uh one thing um but again, this comes down to how, how do you balance things? I have always desperately want to do that same PTSD story where he's like goes into his mind and, and works with that. Oh, what yes. happened in, in the ice realm? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I hope it'll happen sometime. <laughs> uh, but like, oh, we, we are making a kids show here. So yeah. maybe we'll do the goofy version of it. And, and obviously, you know, I, I am, I I like to consider myself as a product, uh, no, a storyteller. But ultimately, on Ninjago, I'm an, I'm a producer here, so it is about mm -hmm. balancing stuff out. And I'm I'm never forced. I you know I may pitch an idea a few times, but I'm never gonna force a writer to do something they absolutely don't want to do. So right. um, there was a, a general consensus in the writing room that hey it's it's time to do something that we think is fun let's have some fun with this thing over here um so that's yeah. one thing i would love love to change and then um i would have i love the thing about gamadon motivate or pushing lloyd into becoming uh, the only thing um, what I would have loved there was like, I would have loved to have him take over Lord's ass for a minute and a half before he saw that reflection. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I, I do agree. It was short. It was what we could do, mm -hmm. but it, would, it came down to either we, we balance the character or we balance the dra we, we use the dragon. Like, what, what, yeah. what do we, what do we, how well we want to put our chips here? And mm -hmm. And obviously, then there's the argument: Oh, why, why, why were we wasting your time with those zany episodes early in the season uh, when you sh we could have put more emphasis on that thing? Um, but that's to our process. We are we're coming up with a master plan, and then we're we're really just chopping it up uh, a bit at the, at the time. So there's very, very, very few instances where we can kind of go back and say, oh yeah, let's take this away because we, we need more time. That train has 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 left the station because okay. of the way we're producing this stuff. But yeah, mm -hmm. 
Um, that would have been enough. wonderful um, to see yeah. see more of that. Um, mm -hmm. On that note, you, something you said earlier actually made me realize, and I, I know we have like a question pending, but I don't want to forget about this. Uh, something that we noticed is in one of the episodes, Cole corrected, he he stated, and I think he at one point corrected a character when they were trying to reach out to Shintaro, and they referred to yeah. Vanya as a princess. And at the end of Master of the Mountain, she was coronated as queen. Was that just like... like... That's probably me not paying attention oh, enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, it was like R Racer 7, or I guess Blazy was like it, Queen yeah. Vanya, and Cole was like, no, Princess Vanya. <laughs> I mean, in Cole's mind, she's a princess. Oh! <laughs> he was there for her coronation. <laughs> it was the worst birthday party ever. Let's do this thing, you know. Was, like, no, see, well, why, like, let's, let's, let's do this thing, you know. Uh, it happens like there's also yeah. Gamadon says um, when I was resurrected from the, the the cursed realm, right? Yeah. In Sons of Gamadon, he says I was uh, it, yeah. I saw some things in the divided realm that I would rather not speak about or something like that. So is this a contradiction? Well, kind of. Well, because of the Day thing. of the Departed. Um... Since Moro also was in the departed realm and he was in the cursed realm. Um. <laughs> All right, so so here's and I, you know I am backtracking here. Like, <laughs> all right, we know <laughs> the cursed realm went into the departed yeah. realm because of the events of what's it called the Kaiju Protocol so, that comes in out of the departed realm. Yeah, we know that Gamadon was in the cursed realm. What do you know about the process of getting resurrected from a realm within a realm? Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, he was in the cursed realm. Yes, he passed through the part departed realm in the process of being resurrected, and he saw some stuff there. So, <laughs> what, both things are correct. If I really have to defend that point of view, um, mm -hmm. so it's 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 uh, it's one of those things where. Ah, uh, give the writers a little credit. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a fantasy explanation out there that makes sense. So, but yes, so... even at, yeah. He's in, sorry. He was in the cursed. He was in the departed realm, and then the cursed. Well, sorry. I, I just the other way. Realm is inside the, the departed realm. realm. Okay, okay. Departed and realm. in the departed realm, that's not where the first Binjutsu master is, is it? No, the the place with the floating mountains yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I don't know I... where that place is. Okay, I don't think I, I don't see that. As, that it's, a see high, that as, it's a high fantasy, so. yeah. Okay, because yeah. I, I think a, I think what a lot of people in the community see it as it's like a, an entrance, kind of like where yeah. Harry was in the last book of Harry Potter. He was yeah. in like this weird spot between death and life, and okay. where Dumbledore met him, kind yeah. of where the first Minjutsu Master met. And, and um, one of the ideas for the Harumi resurrection sequence was actually it yeah. would be that location, but a dark version of it. Um, but you know, Ooh. It's, it's so, so much that easier. That, that, that is a lot of that is a lot of building stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I was we, I was just we, hoping that like I mean, we, we would have we would have done it if yeah. we had those assets. But that's that was yeah, willful. it's a lot of budget. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. I was hoping that Garmadon we, did pass through the place where the first Binjutsu Master was, so that when he said, I, I saw things there that I would rather not remember, was just him getting paddled by his father. Like, that's, ultimately, that's just what it was. <laughs> I like that, Megan. Messed up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got uh, one last question for Crystallize before we move on to some deep lore uh, questions. Yes. So, Tyler, the floor is yours. This is one question that we received a lot throughout is, the uh, season, but also a lot in the comments for Tommy. This is, this is the most important question I'm going to ask today. Uh, this is more important than, than Harumi, Garmin, on Overlord, anything. What was the deal with the rat? <laughs> <laughs> because the rat... I have the board back here. The rat appeared throughout multiple episodes when the ninja were in very specific circumstances of danger. The rat had yellow eyes. The rat! It could have been something. It could have been something important. What was it, Tommy? 
Mess up. I Pepe so Sylvia is a person. So I part of the curse of doing what I'm doing is watching these episodes like at least ten times in their development. <laughs> I am ashamed to say I have watched that episode, those episodes, that many times, and I never picked up on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a rat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that establishes a super well. I never saw it had a glowing eye. It's absolutely brilliant. I would love to think this is part of the good karma of the series. And, you know, maybe a, a an animator and Wild Brain thought, hey, I'll put this in because I really love uh, hunt it, so I'm gonna put this in, and mm -hmm. this is my little thing. And I guess what I'm saying now is, oh, it could be Mistaki. I don't know. It would. I think it it would make sense, but that's up for that's up for a later reveal. Then I think it would be beautiful because did Gamadon really kill her? And if so, would he then be redeemable? But maybe mm -hmm. this is the explanation that. Oh, he is redeemable because he didn't kill her. He actually let her get away. They made some sort of underhand deal. But again, speculation. But I, I, I loved the theory when I, I saw it, and I was kind of ashamed that oh, I'm <laughs> something with that. I, I can, right. I can confirm with you, Tommy, that I think it was the second, no, the third episode when we saw the rat in the uh, underground area. The entire community was like. The rat means something. They they showed and it like three times. And then the worst, the worst <laughs> part is the rat kept coming up after that, so yeah. it kept hammering it home that there's something about the rat. Um, yeah. And the YouTube chat right now is exploding with rats. I yeah, I don't know what happened. Rats, rats, so rats. rats. <laughs> Actually, in the originals, uh, in script for Hunted, when the ninja go, oh, uh, when they go back to fight the Colossus on the dragons from. From yeah, um, first realm, yeah, first realm. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually there was like this echoing voice that spoke to them as they were going through, and that was Mistake. So oh. you know, again, there, there was there, there's ideas about how people pers persist or die or where they go mm -hmm. or voids and stuff like that. But yeah. you know, again, it's it's just not it's not established. Um, I will tell you this though, because I am. I love crystallized. I'm happy with what we did. I have no regrets. There was we had we had ideas, and I think after having seen you guys critique it, I think you would have loved these ideas. Um, one scenario had Lloyd destroy uh, the Overlord, like really, really decimate him after the death of Garmadon. Mm -hmm. Like he smashes him, but he's so angry and it's also out there that now he's. He's lost to his only form, so he basically sits on the throne. Holy shit. And oh, then so they, he takes on as the, yeah, he's the new big now, bad. Like, the, the balance is totally out of whack because this is an Oni, destroying the Oni, Oni Overlord, which is technically an Oni, like, balance is completely out of whack. Uh, the whole realm starts falling apart, something like that. You know, it's these were just ideas. We never actually took it to any kind of outline. That's but so cool. That's so cool. cool. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> well, well Gira comes back and she's like a lightning spirit now because her water element was out wow Liat comes out of the ocean and they have a fight so it's it's huge it's, it's like <laughs> I'll call the ninja to kind of go and, and fight Lloyd and bring him back and uh, you know you basically get the same ending um, and mm -hmm. you know there were there were scenarios where Gamadon died but you know in the end it's like okay uh, let's, let's just Make it nice and, and tidy. Mm -hmm. cool, and cool. This, these kind of reveals all always leaves at least to these we were robbed kind of scenarios because everyone <laughs> wants what they can get or what they can't have. Uh, yeah. But you know, I, I, mean, I, I was like, I give Lego a million dollars for this ending. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> give I mean, me the, a million dollars, and I'll make the comic do, do adaptation of it. <laughs> yeah, the Lloyd idea definitely that like that would never. Oh, that that blew my show. That, but that's gonna yeah. stick with me for for it's a, a little a cool bit. That was, a, that was a cool idea. Yeah, well, I mean, but you know, it's not like we didn't discuss it. But, but yeah. you know, what does that mean for Ninjago and the, the whole balance thing? Then you know, it's mm -hmm. like okay. We we felt that it was Roy wrong for Lloyd to lean into the the only form and use that to destroy. So it was like destruction versus destruction. 
thing and when where we were coming from with the whole thing is is oh this this needs to be about that balance thing so we were really like all right if i write this down on a piece of paper the golden ninja on a golden dragon with four heads which represents the power of the other four ninja the powers of creation fighting the overlord who's basically an oni that's it's perfect balance nice um so so and, and that's that's what we did I, I don't disagree the other thing would probably have played out well and i think you can make up the argument for any of these logics to work even though you know there's probably holes i i haven't thought it all all through but yeah um it's a very cool concept a lot of the things is do is we don't finish the thought like it's like mm -hmm. okay that's the end and now let's, let's go over here cool cool fair enough well there are still a lot of questions in regards to crystallized that are from Twitter, but I feel like we have covered kind of the the big, big ones. Um, I'm sure Tommy maybe one day can go back and look at some of those questions. That's up to him. Um, or we can have another one of these in the future if there are any other like super burning questions about Crystallized, but there is still a lot more that we would like to talk about in regards to Ninjago. We're going to call this the deep lore section, and there's a lot of questions from Twitter that we would like to ask Tommy in regards to this. Uh, the first one uh, is is a question we saw kind of scattered throughout, and so I'm going to kind of sum it up into a smaller question of what can you tell us about how Wu and Garmadon's aging works in this show? All right, yeah. So obviously they have aged quite a bit in recent years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we saw it in Battle of the Brothers, the, the short film, the fighting... Gamadon get cast into the underworld in that fantasy logic that we all love and accept without questioning in it too much. <laughs> That's me! <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy! Um, but obviously that's gotta be the Lord has been conceived, right? So mm -hmm. it's, that's, you know, I don't want to talk ages too much, but let's say that's within the last 10 years of, of the show starting. Um, so, I uh, my my thing was always there's there's a few different scenarios for this thing. Um, the scenario I was kind of going with is like, okay, these two guys have been in the possession of the golden weapon weapons for all these years. Now Garmadon is cast down. Who gets rid of them? It's because of the effect of these weapons that has kept them young. So now old age is, is rapidly ca catching up with them. So that's one explanation. Another could be just like, okay, these these two brothers are such part of the balance that yeah. they have they have balanced that out, out, out. And when one of them is taken out of the equation, going into the underworld, okay, now that balance is broken. Now Wu starts aging, so does Garmadon. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of that logic. Again, nothing's decided, but at least that's what I had in my mind, that because these eyes... Are, these guys are super old and have been aging quite a bit in recent years. So there's got to be some sort of explanation yeah, for that. Yeah. Um, how old How old are we talking? I mean, who says it? Um, He's been over for thousands of years. Do you, is, is you have like a, a certain kind of, I don't say a date, but do you have like a, like a certain number of thousands of years in mind? A couple millennia? Uh, you know, I'm just Ten saying, millennia? like, oh, when we're thinking about it, it's like, okay, oh, start with 10,000 years. Medizuma, Chicago, battles the overlord. Um, after a few thousand years, creates the elements, masters, creates the suns. I don't know, four, five thousand years? I have no idea. They're old. They've been around. They've seen some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for that response, for that answer. Uh, real, up next. Re real quick. I know we have more, but I do feel like this counts as a deep lore question. Uh, and it, <laughs> We are deviating a little bit. It does come from our YouTube chat. Um, I'm not... Maybe you guys know who this is. Um, Vincent Tong in the YouTube chat asks, <laughs> my question, how long before Tommy needs to pee? That's a lot of coffee. <laughs> the deepest lore. <laughs> yeah. I came a very 
well prepared. I've eaten a lot of bananas today. I don't know if you know that, but that's what they use in Denmark. When you visit the queen, you are not allowed to go to the toilet before she does, if you are at a banquet with her. What you do <laughs> is that you eat bananas, um, because oh. that, that, that um, yeah, I, I do that every time I dine with the queen. <laughs> which nice. which, which is, is how often? Well, it's just a few, di- few times a year, you know. There you go. <laughs> The queen all is right. one of Ninjago's biggest fans, so. Thank, thank you, by the way. And of course, shout. all this is pure speculation. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, <laughs> pure speculation. <laughs> Nothing's canon here. <laughs> Sorry, Vincent. Sorry. Now, also, <laughs> shout out to Vincent Tong. Thank you so much for being here today. It's exciting to see you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Vincent. <laughs> all right, I all have right. the next question. This one is about the, the dragons of the first realm. Um, were there dragons of all elements, so stuff like metal sound and time in the first realm or were there only dragons the elements of creation and the wind dragon we saw yeah um given the right budget and the right scope we would probably have had dragons of all the elements okay however we only you know we would kind of narrow it down to oh just just the four dragons uh that has the element of creation Okay, that makes sense. And then there's that wind dragon. Mm-hmm. It, it, this, is, this is one of those, those things where, like, oh, dang it. <laughs> Why did <laughs> that wind dragon in there? If we hadn't that, it would be it'd been super clean. But this, yeah. I mean, this, this is one of the, those things where you react, you, re, uh, you go back and you just fix it. So in my fix mind, it. fix it, fix it. In my mind, uh, <laughs> A dragon is born without an element in the first realm until it reaches adolescence, where then it finds its element. Until that thing, at that time, it's it's a wind dragon. Oh, okay. Yeah, but see, so it's... so by that logic, can they find elements like time and metal? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no. Interesting. No, just the four elements, and the neutral one is an is a, is a wind dragon. <laughs> It's it's a it's, cool a, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a boy before his voice breaks. You know, it's like <laughs> now he finds his voice. So that could be fire. That could uh-huh. be electricity. Couldn't be time. <laughs> Good. Oh man. All right. Uh, so our next question comes from Wario's twenty on Twitter. It's a little bit about our Oni lore here. So we, uh, it says, We heard in Season 8 that every Oni mask embodies an Oni general. But we only saw Omega Oni. What happened to the three Oni generals? And why did we only see Omega? Well, I mean, the three Oni generals, uh, they came to Ninjago in the hunt for the first Pinjitsu master. Two of them were destroyed by Mistaga, and she was the third one. So let's say they arrived... With the three masks, they were there to hunt first Pujitsu master. They set up base in Primeval's eyes, erect the uh, the uh, the Oni temple, and then the hunt goes out from there. Then at a certain point, she kind of starts to like the land. She meets up in some way with first Pujitsu master and doesn't kill him, and now she's starting to turn sides. And then, you know, she destroyed the two others. The, the mask remain. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And obviously there's, there's one one uh one only mask left in Ninjago at this point. We saw the two destroyed and yeah. I think it, was actually, it was mentioned in dialogue as well. Or yes. at least Cole, Cole speculated whether the, the only mask would be in the vault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh. Makes sense. Very good, very good. Time to go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask a question from Lila the Bintho Spear fan on Twitter. Excellent name, by the way. Uh, was, the, was the use of the teapot of Tehran as a background running gag in the Wild Brain era a deliberate choice? Or did someone just decide to put it there for fun? And if you can't answer this, I understand if not, was it meant to hint at anything specific? The board, the teapot, in a <laughs> similar ethos. 
the rat on the teapot. It's, that sounds like a <laughs> great middle elbow. Um, well, um, so the first appearance of the teapot of Tyrion was actually supposed to be happening in uh, Sons of Garmadon. Uh, I know we 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 we, we it was placed uh, in the water uh, when they go to infiltrate the the base where the resurrection is taking place. There was there was a shot of of them going underwater and like camera pans and then there's the teapot of Tyran there. So the idea was it was something I kind of pitched and then it never really happened. But the idea is that that teapot travels the world. It it ends up in different places and obviously that's where we kind of brought that in again in 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 Bernie's stomach like oh there it is. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was it was it was a fun little Easter egg that says hey you remember that guy? Well he could be back. Um, and then the guys at at uh, Wild Brain just took it and ran with it. Um, so it it kept showing up and and then it become a bit of a running production joke. Hey <laughs> this thing. Oh my! What's gonna happen with it? There was there was never really a plan for it, um, but it it felt like oh this is a good running gag and maybe we are trolling the audience a bit, but hey at least we're having fun with it. <laughs> um, Definitely worked. <laughs> <laughs> it caught our attention. Yeah, yeah not yeah. a count was considered for the uh, for the council. Um, oh. Um, but it's again he's he's such a weird presence in Ninjago because a few characters remember him some some don't have they been told about him uh, and it op it just uh, you know letting the genie out of the teapot it just opens up such a huge amount of exposition that needs to happen because now characters in the show need to learn about it uh, but we did have <laughs> we did have uh, ideas that oh uh Clutch powers was about to ask, you know ask it all away and then he just drops the teapot and it breaks. And now another counselor like, what the? <laughs> and he's just out of the teapot. And that's how we would get him to be a part of the Crystal Council. But again, it's it, it just gets very contrived with that guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as, as I kept saying, like, oh, God, now they're doing it again. Clutch Power is always running around with that lamp. And it's over there in the background. And I was like, OK, wouldn't it be a fun idea that if if Braggy and I, who's this is our last series, just take off with the lamp? It's it's now it's it's in safe hands. You don't need to worry about it anymore, or do you? <laughs> so it was it was just this very self indulgent little thing that we kind of came up with, or um, and then uh, yeah, we we thought we'd earned it. It it's it is a running gag and not nothing yeah. more than that. Fair He's enough. a scary dude. So when we saw that teapot for the first time, we were like, oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> like he he was yeah. so scary that he in the timeline that he existed in, he won. He he was yeah. he was that terrifying. So it was it was an Easter egg that we all took very seriously. Then, uh, it, you know, it, 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 you feel a bit guilty about it because we I know we were setting up some expectations that we weren't really gonna be paying yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, I had fun with it. That that, that was very fun. <laughs> And then there was some sort of story that was happening with the teapot and crystallized that a couple of people were able to catch up on. Um, I, I think there are, there are two people who snuck into crystallized to get the teapot back into their control. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I've actually watched the last version of that episode because I watched them so much in the process of mm -hmm. being created. But I, I when, when, those two guys, and by the way, one is, has very swanky clothes and a nice hat. Green <laughs> <laughs> towards clutch, clutch powers. Was there were, were there any punch sounds? There was no punch sounds, so. but in the finale, we did see you, or maybe not the finale, but it was dragon form. Yeah. I, either of those, you and Braggy, were, you had a teapot and you were like, we got it. And then you, yeah, no, yeah. Just, then we, you bounced. Yeah. We, obviously, we're cowards and we're not going to be in that fight. No, no, we're just taking <laughs> no problem. We have, we have the teapot. <laughs> yeah, but the idea was like these two guys, they, they jump uh, uh, clutch powers inside the warehouse mm -hmm. and they take it for a minute. Because you've basically given 
the dumbest guy in Ninjago, the nuclear launch keys. So we felt like <laughs> we need to be taken away from him somehow. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Let's get to the really important stuff. Uh, Chima. Um, <laughs> we have a question from Geckozilla on Twitter. And he says, for a while now, some fans have thought that the Serpentine had something to do with Chima. Were the similarities between the Serpentine and the Chima tribes ever brought up behind the scenes, or were they just an unnoticed coincidence? Thanks for the great childhood. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can take credit for that. I think a lot of people had something to do with it, like parents. Um, but um, <laughs> the, the idea when, when we did uh when when we did legends of chima we took a very conscious decision that we were not going to include snake people in that because that's that's for ninjago we're not going to do dragons either that's for ninjago we're not going to do dragon in exo nights when it came to that that's for ninjago so you're gonna you, you're gonna set up some barriers and, and parameters so they don't yeah. kind of blend together um but i always liked the idea that maybe the first Jitsu master had gone to chima to Populate Ninjago in some way, so he would have brought some out, some over. Maybe there's a maybe there's a Legends of Chima story where you know the snakes are becoming a problem, but mm. this happens before what we saw anything of the of of the Legends of Chima stories. So they would basically have been brought out of that world. Again, this is just cool ideas and what could have happened. Not saying it it did happen or anything like that, but. I, I always I always thought that was that was a pretty neat idea. Yeah. Uh, and when when Moro and Lloyd fell into uh, Chima in possession, in possession that, it wasn't even my idea. That was the Higgins that put that in. I think this was a little fun fun gag. But obviously that kind of canonized it. Um, yeah. So now, <laughs> now there is that connection between things and. Uh, we just then we just had fun with that and uh, oh let's get some beavers into Ninjago and very very sorry it wasn't the beaver that did the final blow to the Overlord it, that could have been great. Um, oh, that would have been epic. Would have been epic. Yeah. Oh, no. Fix it. I'll nope. Fix it. <laughs> nope. I hate fix it. Fix the balance. Fix the balance. I hate it. <laughs> Awful. Yeah. No, but I, these are neat ideas and I it's 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 something yeah, it's that always... we could do something with. It's always fun if things line up in a way where they could work mm. out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the next question, also in the realm of Serpentine, uh, this comes in from Tim's Antics over on Twitter. Where do you see the uh, Hydro Snakes, the Hydro Whippers from um, Seabound? Where do they come from? Are they snakes or are they more eels? Like, what do you have an origin story for them? Uh, no origin, sto origin story. Obviously, they they were there before the first Jinjitsu Master came um, because they were part of that battle with uh, with Wujira. Um no, I, I, I don't see them as a Serpentine tribe, and it, definitely not if we're going with that logic that, oh, maybe First Benjitsu Master brought some some uh, Serpentine into uh, to Ninjago, and, you know, oh, that, that that didn't work well for that guy either. He's messing up a lot with me. Um, so, no, these would be more like a sea creature, eels or something like that. Uh, we we did discuss calling... Uh, no, this, this was back in... Uh, when was this? This was back in rebooted. When we see those electric eels in the yeah. in the was it was it a museum or the aquarium? Aquarium. We was calling them seventeen because they were kind of electric. Um, <laughs> but I mean, again, there's often no big bigger reason behind anything we do than oh, this this is kind of neat, <laughs> and then we 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 fix it later. It's okay. like LJ has the next question. Yeah, yeah, and no, I, I do. Uh, I'm sorry. I again, I want to apologize to everyone for being so quiet. I'm managing the stream and like I'm trying to get the pictures up so everyone can like read along and <laughs> know what we're talking about and whatnot. But I mean, we do have a cast of like six people. It's a, like we're, we're all okay. just oh, waiting yeah. our turn. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So this comes from at Crunch Monster One, and this is pertaining to the Hands of Time, Crux and Acronix, the Hands of Time. And they ask, when Master Wu defeated the Hands of Time, Crux and Acronix, what happened to Crux, Acronix, and the Three Time Blades? 
Did they die? Did they get transported to a different year? Or did they fall out of the time vortex and get arrested? Thank you for your amazing work on the show. Well, thank you. Um, again, this is one of those, I love having a dark horse that, you know, <laughs> these guys would drop out of the air at any time. No one is safe. <laughs> and they would be pretty amputated because they only have three of those time blades. But the whole idea of they're, they're spiraling through time are they caught in a loop? Are they going back? Are they going forward? They were at least going forward the last time we saw them. But and and that's what we played uh, played with in that short film in in 2011, uh, 2021. When when was anyway the tenth yeah, well, yeah. anniversary with Golden Legend, where you see the Iron Doom in the background as the the warrior walks towards walks towards the dragon. And so again, just planting that little seed of, oh my God, maybe what's been happening to Ninjago in to lead to that story is a result of a timeline getting mixed up with because of what happened there. Uh, but you know, often it's 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 fun to ask the questions and not provide the answers. Uh, <laughs> so I I would love to see the hands of time again. Uh, that's not up for me to decide anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd and the dragon defeats the overlord and they think everything's great and all of a sudden, boom, <laughs> the hands of time are back <laughs> and they brought another overlord and they have to do it all over again. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, sometimes it's it's a little, ah, it's, it hurts you a little because sometimes we have very good in intentions and then you have to cut something from the show just because yeah. of time. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, in the in the final episode of Hands of Time, um, you actually had Wu uh, back in the past uh, approach his younger self, you know, mm. you, like, um, and like no one must ever must ever know of what happened here. You must make all the elemental elemental masters forget what they've seen here. Go to Mistagi, get some. What, what, what was the obscurity? Obscurity. Have <laughs> you drink it, and this will all be fine. Um, so, so there was like that little patch that says, "Okay, okay, that's how that time continuity continuity works." Now we have patched that. Let's call it a plot hole. However, then there was one of the elemental masters that didn't drink it. You know, oh, there's a story there. Uh, so, so little 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 stuff like that is is super mm -hmm. fun. And uh, you know, we also had had the idea of uh, who 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 is Samurai X. You know, it turned out to be Pixel, but in another scenario, that was Wu having gone back from the future. Oh. You know, he was hurled into the future with Crux and Acronix. However, now he was a time traveling back into elements of time to help out the ninja, and he was there all the way through. Right, so. Ideas. <laughs> it's like it's so ideas with your mind with these alternate scenarios, and obviously we didn't do it because we like the whole pixel thing. But you see, didn't do it because oh. you like my sanity. No, see, no, no. <laughs> what you don't know is Meso is a huge. Comment on there. Right? He loves yeah. time travel. Meso is the biggest. I'm throw this water bottle through the screen at you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't teleport awesome. garbage water through the screen, Meso. <laughs> and before he says it, we are not sponsored by any brands of water. Especially not the best brands nope, of water. No, stop it. Knock it off. Nope, get it out of here. <laughs> cool, cool ideas. I'm glad they didn't happen. Yeah, that, that was that was like a bombshell idea. That's, that's a fascinating that's concept. That's awesome. It is a very cool idea. <laughs> and I may, it helps with the whole plot of I cannot reveal my identity because that would really yeah. really screw with things if that yeah. ended up being woo that would but make sense him as that, that wonderful idea of bringing him back as a baby you know so you know <laughs> yeah, i'm glad we didn't do it because that gave us sons of garment on yeah. yeah that is fair that is fair all right all right uh next question uh lily was one of the last parents to be revealed for the ninja um if not the last parent to be revealed. However, Jay at that point had 
and still to this day has the only backstory that hasn't really been fully fleshed out. So a question from Duck Bricks on, tw on Twitter says, since the original plot for Prime Empire featuring Jay's mother was scrapped, would you be open to revealing what cir circumstances caused Jay to be given up for adoption and his biological father Cliff to remain estranged from him? If there are any like concepts in, the, in that regard. Uh, I, no, it, it's just something we never explored. It's one of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we know about how, we know what the status is. We don't know what led to it, but yeah. there definitely was uh, there was an idea to have uh, uh, Jay's mother, uh, Liber, as I always called her, uh, being part of Prime Prime Empire. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think that's one of the one of the few regrets I have is I it, I think that season should have been electricity based to some extent, like it should have relied more on his elemental powers. Maybe mm -hmm. it was important to get uh, Jay into the video game because he they could somehow harness that power and use that for some stores or a big blood plot. And we also had a, an, an early scenario where um, uh, Liver with Jay was running from someone and gave her up, dropped her, dropped him off at the, the steps of, of Ed and Edna because someone was after him because of his elemental powers. So it's it's like the choice she had to make it was to give up her child, um, so they would hunt her. But she, at least the the child yeah. would be safe, um, and that that would then have tied her her into Prime Empire in some way. You know, was she a prisoner in there? Did she work with Milton Dyer? You know, all these things we 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 just never explored it any further because we also realized, well, isn't this just the beginning of Harry Potter now? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> this is getting parents all over the place. Let's not mm -hmm. do this right now. Uh, but obviously, yeah. that conversation between uh, uh, Jay and, uh, and Unigami at the end would have resonated more if we'd done something like that. Mm. Mm. Cool, cool. Thank you. I would, I would love to... A person who doesn't know much about Ninjago listening to all this crap, <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it makes sure yeah. sense. It's just words flying everywhere. It's a lot. That it is, is for lot, yeah. sure. <laughs> all right, next one. All right, so next question is just a general one about the uh, the different realms in Ninjago. Obviously, we know there's 16 or 17. I actually don't know what the correct number mm -hmm. is there, but there's lots of different realms we've seen quite a few of them but we've not seen them all is there any like realms that we you had concepts for that were meant to be on the show that never did or anything more about the realms that we may not know about that you would like to share nope <laughs> <laughs> <That's an easy laughs> one. No one we, know. Uh, we know there are more realms there could be even more we don't know uh, but i think mm -hmm. we basically the ones that we've dealt with is the one that we know about then there's yeah. stuff like um the realm of shadows from that kind of obscure uh, theater production out in mm -hmm. malaysia okay is that a realm maybe it isn't I mean, some of the stuff that i'm dealing with in the, the few of those writing projects i'm doing as a, as a ninjago fan where it's like uh, it's 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 recognized in those things but obviously these are also kind of what we call could be canon it doesn't mean yeah. it is canon but mm -hmm. you know there's I think in uh, in uh, in in Way of the Departed, um, there is mentions to Lar, the elemental monster yeah. of water, and <laughs> stuff like that. But he, like, so the book in which he's in that co totally contradicts everything is is recognized in there. But it's also clear that he was just a charlatan that that mm -hmm. did great tricks. So. Risk reactively trying to make sense of these things that happens beyond like the TV series control is is always is is always fun, but it's also extremely nerdy and not something we want to spend value TV show production money on. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I don't you know I don't hope we're done seeing realms and stuff like that. It's always been a very fascinating thing, and that was totally the idea of the the Higgins. Like, just all right, we have this thing, but what if it's this thing? And we got some great adventures out of that. <laughs> sure, yeah. That's very true. So the next question comes from World Cars Entertainment over on Twitter. 
Um, and they ask, do all the skeletons and ghosts originate from Ninjago, or do some come from other realms, since the Underworld and Cursed Realm are two separate things? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so if someone weird. dies in Chima, do they go to the Departed Realm? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> oh, God. Let's see. <laughs> I like that. The the phoenix went into the sun. Ah, it's better to not go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's a fascinating thing, right? Because now we have yeah. we have several established incidents on how you can go between realms, right? There's the dragon back. There's uh, realm crystal. There's some back doors apparently, um, because you can you can get to the underworld from the where, temple. By, yeah, by fire temple, stuff like that. Uh, and then there's a realm crystal. So, and then, you know, we made a point out of the, uh, in the Kaiju protocol to say, hey, the ninja are now out of traveler's tea to kind of just seal that off. And that's why I think that episode has merit, uh, despite what a lot of other people think. Um, it takes that thing out of the equation. Um, however, we had we had some interest, interesting ideas about, about, you know, should we introduce that again? Traveler's tea and stuff like that. Uh, let's go find Misako's garden or something like that. But it's never not not, not anything we ever did. Uh, Misako's garden. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Thank you. All right. Very nice. That? Well, that oh. is the deep, deep lore section. Now we're gonna move on to some extras. So these are like some, you know, quick little answers, some fun little, you know, ninja related exercises and whatnot. Um, I think Tommy, you like to refer to this as loose change. Um, so to get started, Brayden, we'll start with the first uh, big question that has been on the topic for Ninjago fans for a long time. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Um, and don't don't kill me when I say this, but um, so the ninja <laughs> ages. We need to know. We need to know what are the ninja's ages, Tommy. You gotta tell us. You gotta tell us. <laughs> You've waited so long. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> it's been long enough. We're all 40 years old. We we no longer want to hear old teenagers. We want a date. <laughs> I mean, I would even accept early twenties. That's fair. <laughs> I don't know how old is Batman. That's a like good in question. His 40s? <laughs> it depends on the iteration, probably. Yeah, I mean, and I, I know that Ninjago and Batman isn't the same thing. I know it's not mm -hmm. Simpsons either. We've had some character development and stuff like that. But I, I, my my answer to that is what I've always answered. It's that is up for the viewer. I think mm -hmm. it's what's important is as many of people can identify with Ninjago and make it their own. And if it makes sense that they are seventeen years old because you're seventeen years old, that's that's fine. Um, and mm -hmm. if they're 25, because that's what you think makes sense in, oh, they had a driver's license in that episode, and then you know, well, now there's relationships, so they got to be 18 or something like that. That's fine as well. Um, mm -hmm. So it is really up for the individual thing. And, and we bring in kids every year. Uh, we want to make sure that these kids relate to these characters. They're aspirational, but they're also relatable and, you know, Whatever, man. <laughs> Fantastic answer. Loved it. Sweet. Thank you, Very Tommy. Satisfying. <laughs> oh, boy. I think this is Elf. Oh, is it, is it my turn? This. It is I will say this. Yeah. We kind of, we had them pegged a little younger than we then probably decided that they were. Not that we attached any ages to it, but, and even the Hagenmans and I never agreed on this. I think it, it was a lot of my doing the whole thing about not i yeah i may be remembering that wrong but the whole thing about let's let's not assign any ages to these guys let's not give them a birthday because they're also in this world where they're probably not going off our calendar because that stems from christianity and to some extent this is a world ninjago is a world with no real god you know mm -hmm. there's this creation myth and the first Benjitsu master but how how is that called common knowledge mm. you know it's is that ever touched upon you know i yeah. don't think it is but i might be remembering this wrong 
uh, but the, how what does the, the common Ninjago citizen actually know? Um, yeah. But you know, I, there's something beautiful to be to it being like, oh, this is a place without religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, Fair enough. However, someone worshipped a storm deity called Gujira, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust anything I say is the conclusion. <laughs> conclusion. <laughs> all right. Uh, two things. First of all, First. I just want to clarify for everyone in the YouTube chat. I don't know if we're going to get to the YouTube questions today. Uh, I don't know if that's on the docket or not. Just unsure. So for some that are asking questions in the YouTube chat, um, just... Just know we are reading it. We're not ignoring anyone. There's no no malice. Uh, however, we are definitely not going to be asking about any community ships today. I hope, Sensei, is that the case? Please. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Thank yeah, you. No. All right. I just wanted to because I know a lot of people are asking in the chat, and I'm like reading it and, and whatnot. And I no, I think it's I think it's important to to state that because like yeah. we have a document of stuff. That we've yeah. kind of made to act as like not not a hard ironclad rule, but kind of like a guide. We're on page five of twenty five, yeah. and we're two hours in. I don't. Oh, think I mean, there it, will doesn't, be any it doesn't questions. go. It doesn't go yeah. all the yeah. way until twenty five, but there are still quite a few Even questions. Still. Left. Yeah. But sorry, since I just I I wanted to yeah, okay. to quickly yeah. Uh, yeah. mention that. Uh, want to take off Vincent on going to the bathroom at some point then. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Yeah, we, we can have an we can, we can take a break. Yeah. We can do elevator music. Just let us know. <laughs> yeah. I don't have elevator. We'll, we'll sit here and discuss. <laughs> I'll just. I'm just gonna play the. Uh, I'm gonna play the Dareth cast song on loop. Is <laughs> what's gonna. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, next question. This is pertaining to Klaus. Uh, this comes from at Moonberry Pie Two on Twitter. Good who name. asks. How did Klaus learn dark magic, and where did he get his book of spells? Are there multiple books of spells, or is this lost knowledge after it was burned? And finally, are there other users knowledgeable in dark magic other than Oni? Thank you very much for doing this Q&A. Okay. Yeah, and then, then uh, my apologies for not having a better answer, but it is it is one of those things that is sort of covered by we don't, we don't make up a complete backstory on anything uh, mm -hmm. if you don't need it. Um, uh, so Klaus was a magic user, sorcerer, whatever we call it, that we introduced in uh, in Tournament of Elements. That doesn't mean that we've gone into the backstory of, oh, there was a there was a council of magic users and, and spell books. Uh, that's not discounting it. Those are those are very, very valid ideas and it's interesting. But we never went and explored those, those opportunities. Um, it is like we're 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 looking at the one uh, road that we need to take to tell a story, and then if we want to pick something up along the way, we do that and we go back and and discuss that and revise that and make that a plot point. But until then, it's could happen, could not happen. All right. No, that, that's cool. Awesome. That that works. Touche. I accept it. <laughs> but obviously, we we we've kind of dealt with it. Like, okay, so, so I've heard apparently the Serpentine had some sort of magic back in the day. True. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's it's totally fair game. The next question comes in from uh, Seth here over on Twitter, and very short one. What happened to the mailman? <laughs> well, I mean, I would like to come up with a great canon thing. I think the sad thing is he probably means more to you than he does to me. Oh. <laughs> oh. I guess uh, the, the the real answer is we kind of I guess we forgot about him. <laughs> oh. Oh. We need a day of the departed like special about remembering the mailman. <laughs> yeah. So wonderful theories about him being Nelson in the future. <laughs> yes. Well, do you want to hear the most... Or something like that? Do you know the most recent theory about the mailman, Tommy? No. But he, did not sur he did not survive Seabound. 
Oh no! <laughs> Bummer. Uh, he was well, in Ninjago he, City, and he was uh, unfortunately he a casualty. Yeah, was it? We did, we did uh, do I don't think he was at the of him, though, that, um, They mentioned uh, that a mailman was coming up and uh, oh, yeah, had and, had, yeah, had intercepted him or intercepted yeah. the mailman. Yeah. 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 But obviously, so. yeah, it's it, it's it's an oversight because that's an asset we have. So mm -hmm. why wasn't he there? Yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. Fair enough. I had I I I provided a list to uh, to Wildbrain when we did those uh, the fight sequences in episode mm -hmm. nine thirty. Like here's all the characters that I know we have, and I would like us to put in there. And here's a prioritized order. Do as much as you can. I'm not gonna insist on anything because. I've been unreasonable not with the, <laughs> with you enough with my whims and my weird demands in the production. So like, please do as much as you can with this. And then, and then it was like, oh, can I don't want touch powers to be part of that. He's <laughs> so that's that's kind of what my I guess one my major input to that thing was like, yeah, anything but touch powers. <laughs> <laughs> powers. That's awesome. Well, all right then. <laughs> all right. Next question uh, comes from uh, officially writing crystallized reimagined or at moonlight myg dot dot dot. I don't know the rest of that uh, Twitter handle. Uh, they ask a very, I think, a very fun question, Tommy, that you could uh, explore. In Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu, we saw Neo, Lloyd, and Zane's greatest fears. What do you think Kai, Jay, and Cole's greatest fears were? Ooh. Uh, well, maybe you could ask uh, Vincent Tong about that if he's in the there chat. There you go. Or Vincent. Uh, we can pass the Vincent one on to him. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the Kai one. Cole? Um, I think, well, whether she wanted to or not, I think Lily put a pretty big burden on Cole by her, mm. like, Let's not call them final words, but what she said to him. Um, I, he would be super scared not to live up to, to that. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously now he, he, knows, he knows more about them than he did before Master of the Mountain. So, uh, you know, he, he's, he's done the right thing, definitely, and he's the right person. But I think that would, that would be his uh, not... Disappointing the legacy of his mom there. Um, who else was there? Uh, oh, Jay. 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 Well, that's got to be Nia, a Nia thing, right? I mean, he is so infatuated with that girl. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's disgusting. <laughs> I think you so, look in the mirror and see Nia in the wedding dress with like the uh, the splash on her, like she's dying again. Poison. But he'd be scared. Yeah, yeah. Oh, being yeah. In that situation. If, you, if you really do that, yeah. Oh, what, what, what? So, yeah, I can ask you that. What, what would Cole's, ref what, what would, what he sees in the mirror be? It's like it's his. It would know. be something about you know, you know, his mother was like you know, always stand up to people and whatnot. Uh, I know his fear in Day of the Departed was being alone. That was like his, he was always grasping with, I don't want to be alone. I'm never alone. So him like looking in the mirror and seeing nothing. I think could also be kind of scary for him, kind of in the same way with in possession when he looked in his reflection in possession and saw nothing. It was scary for him in that moment. Um, and I love, I love when I do stuff. Oh, we do stuff like this. It's like, oh, look at all these weighty fears they all have. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, he's afraid of being bald. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kai there. was scared of like gingerbread men and, and water, elves and stuff, and water at a time. <laughs> They're pretty scary. He's afraid of yeah. a bad hair day. Uh, Vincent Tong in the chat uh, says, "I think Kai fears not being liked, not being included, and fears anything happening to his family." But if you want a serious answer, a bad hair day. <laughs> oh, that's a serious answer. <laughs> You're so well in sync. Uh, I'm never, okay. never gonna get rid of that guy, Vincent Tong. We're like peas in a pod. We still talk. It's it's great. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we may still be working together. May or not, may not. Um, 
yeah, but, but I think I think the first answer was pretty good. I think yeah. that that gels well with how Guy has been uh, conducting himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. All right. Well, and thank leads... you for answering that. Yeah, and it also leads perfectly in the next into the next question with Cole. So this is about the future reflections. Um, a while ago, you said that they were are supposed to be taken literally, and you want to explain that one day. What the plan behind those? So, what what's the plan behind the future reflections and possessions? What were like your wishes? How it would end up? So those make sense. <laughs> yeah. So I have a few scenarios. They're all very half baked, but I think one of them is really good. I think I'll keep that to myself. Uh, <laughs> well, well, is if if that's, that's the reason, I would love it to be canonized. Uh, so if I get the opportunity, yeah. I get like keep, keep pushing for it behind the scenes. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll come back to this in ten years, and then you have yes. to tell us. <laughs> I'll keep asking that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know if it works, but uh, you know, it's it's definitely something that's been haunting me over the years. Thank you very much. Uh, and you know, the the design changes uh, when we we did those that definitely didn't help. Yeah. I am also of the mind that once you accept something, you kind of lose uh, you lose the right to complain about it. So that is why I'm kind of always leaning into my own mistakes and say, well, yeah. Well, we did that. I'm not saying that was a mistake, but we did that. But I at least accepted that we did that. So now, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to, oh, we should have done something different. Um, that's that's always the, the road forward there. Uh, I think that's that's a good good idea to I have that kind of mindset. Approach to the... Yeah. I agree. Speaking of mistakes, <laughs> um, no joke. I think this, this really. this many, in the, many in the community this, would. Uh... This question has sort of been covered already, but yeah, sort of. I think yeah. it's important to to just kind of verbalize it. Um, so, in terms of Zane's arc, all right, I have a question from Duck Bricks. It says, "Quote: Were there ever any plans to address Zane's turn as the Ice Emperor?" in a more serious slash character-driven manner. The only other time it was brought up post-season 11 was when it was kind of played for laughs. Yeah, I, I, I really wanted to, I wanted to do this PTSD story. And I think we, I, I hope they're still gonna, I've left a, uh, behind a few ideas. I hope someone mm -hmm. picks them up at some point. Uh, uh, maybe whether that's in a book or, you know, make it over, right? Uh, I think Ninjago is so ripe for spin-offs. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm not working on the main show anymore. I would, I would be very open to doing spin-offs. It's just like, okay, but it, it needs to, it needs to have a, a different focus. <laughs> yeah. That's a good example. The Garmadon comics is a great example. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, I, but, but I think, uh, the Echo Sane thing is yeah. is like a bit of a darling of mine that could easily be tied into a, a, a Sane thing because you know shouldn't they meet? Shouldn't shouldn't Sane impart something on Echo Sane or the other way around? Um, there, there's just there's great opportunities for stories there. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, yeah, and even like okay, we we had. We had ideas on what happens between Seabound and and uh, Crystallized. You know, what's the relationship with the Melopians now? How does Benthamar get back in power? That kind of thing. Is there an adventure there be be before the Ninja break up? Because yeah, but um, there's only so much time. <laughs> Fair enough. Absolutely. Um... Next question comes from Lloyd Webb, and this is kind of, I guess, kind of been covered, but um, but uh, this person says uh, if Garmanon was resurrected with his Oni side of himself, could Sensei Garmanon 
be in the departed realm still carrying the dragon side of him? If so, would that mean there would be two Garmadons? I like that idea. Um, <laughs> you would have to make some sort of sense out of it. But if you take verbatim what the way Garmadon phrased it, I definitely yeah. see that as an, an opportunity. Um, it's, it, I think what, what we... Um, obviously, that would also have implications on crystallized. Because what you're seeing is that... Uh, is, is Garmadon, isn't he starting to connect with his humanity again? Isn't that part starting to flare up? So I would, I, you know, I don't know, but I guess... Sensei Garmadon or is is very very deep inside him. Um, it's mm. just so suppressed. But at least the connection with Christopher and and, and that whole wonderful little story. Um, as there's there's some development for Garmadon to do, definitely. Both in what you know, and 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 I, this we may get into that, but I could I could cover it right now. When the whole the Garmadon book. Um, we were in close dialogue with um, they, they uh, developing that Tommy Kalmar and Try. They they did knew, know where where we were going with Gamadon for uh, for uh, for crystallized. So so that's kind of actually very well in sync. Um, and you saw the ending of crystallized. Uh, sorry, a Gamadon comic book. It's but the idea is also there could be a lot of it uh, of adventures in there before we get to that point where he shows up at Vinny's door. And by the way, that's probably my favorite episode of, of, of Crystallized. It was just a wonderful <laughs> idea. And when we did uh, when we did March of the Oni, uh, and Braggy wrote that scene uh, with Vinny and Garmadon, uh, he already had that idea that, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful at some point if Garmadon would start talking about Vinny as like, the, the wisest man he ever knew. <laughs> what, he, <laughs> what he said to him was just like, it's kind of, it's profound, but banal. It's, um, and then that just several years down the road turned into that wonderful episode where he just shows up and becomes the worst house guest you could ever imagine. <laughs> it's an excellent episode. Oh, yeah. it's such a good episode. Hmm. All right. Well, we are now going to move on to a section uh, I like to call alternate concepts or the production side of Ninjago. So this is more towards, you know, the the more of the actual scenes behind Ninjago rather than, you know, the story stuff. Uh, LJ has the first question in this section. Yes. So this first one is, again, from Duck Bricks over on Twitter, who asks... Around last year, a ton of concept art was published about unused Ninjago plot lines, from Western slash Cowboys to the Golden Army, Fibo, Coming of the Ancient <clears throat> Ones, and more. Is there anything you can share about these concepts that never came to be? Um, they aren't much more than concepts. Lego is very, very thorough when when we develop this, and this all comes from that amazing Ninjago team in Billund. They're they what you're seeing is ten percent of what they create every year. Um, that's both in terms of concept art. That's in both both in, that's different versions of models uh, or alternate models, um, very very different ones. All this stuff gets built. It gets created. There's paintings. There's a kernel of a story, but what it is is mostly a concept. And then that gets presented to children that then say, oh, this is what we love. This. So a lot of great stuff is there. And it's, it's, it's quite painful to watch, actually, once in a while, because it's then that Pedigar uh, does these wonderful, wonderful paintings uh, or, or did. Um, um, but it just never comes to fruition uh, because... It was a great idea, but there's just one that is slightly better that the kids prefer, and that's the one we're going with. Oh, that's Joshua Dick. Nothing quiet. 
nothing quite yet. I think the stream was uh, going a little crazy for a second, but I, is it good now, stream? I think it. They were saying it was going at two frames a second. Okay. That was, oh, that was it. Anyways, so um, the, the team in Villain makes these amazing concepts. I mean, I think that's why <laughs> Joshua Dick showed up in my mind, like the concept art he does. Um, so, so, and then children basically select uh, the concept that the, they, they do, and they take us to us, take it to, to the, the writing team. Um, so a lot of the heavy lifting is actually done by the team in Billund uh, from a very concept and toy perspective. It's, uh, it's quite wonderful to watch, and it's also painful to see the stuff that, that doesn't get selected, because once in a while, uh, for instance, I absolutely did not want to do Prime Empire. It was not one of my favorite concepts. But once then once you get it and you get to work with it, that's when you start to work with it. And then you actually you kind of develop into it. You start to like it. And now there's actually a story that makes sense to you in there. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I, they, they were very memorable, uh, recognizable concepts. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, he's back. <laughs> he's on his way back. Tyler just dipped out. <laughs> and now this is the part of the show, everyone, where we run into technical difficulties. It's <laughs> <laughs> all good, right? Yeah. All right. We got Discord I'm... crashing and reorganizing. We got choppy two <laughs> frames a second stream. We got everything. And I'll Everything take in the, the uh, one minute bio break that Vincent suggested earlier. I'll take that okay. right now. Fair enough. And take a, a quick though. moment, then intermission you break as we. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Okay. This this I'll is. Hear it back too. All right. This we is the part where. A bit. I wish. I think. I think well, we have we'll, a, we'll be back. I think we have a screen for this. Uh, I'm gonna try it out. So we will be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> Base. All right, uh, if someone do me a favor, check the stream. Does it show us uh, still? Can anyone hear us talking? Let's see. Uh, I'm checking right now. It's delayed. It should be right the TTV Be Right Back screen. Mm, not yet. Not yet. But there's delay and there's yet. like very bad frame rate. Yeah, I, oh. I have a reason for that, but I want to make sure that we're. Uh, yeah, it didn't work. Yeah. They can still hear and see us. Oh, okay. That's. Oh, I see. That's.
All right, and we have returned. Everyone, can you we see are... and hear us? Hello. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hello, welcome back. We've all, well, some of us have relieved ourselves. Tommy is on to his third cup of coffee, if not more. Um, and we still have 20 questions. I'm, I'm joking, we won't have 20 questions left. We still have, we, we have a couple more questions to ask. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Thank you for holding out for us, and we're going to go ahead and jump right back in. The next question comes from... Uh, All right, and oh, we What are you doing? Uh -oh. That's me. That was when I was checking to make sure the stream was good, and I forgot <laughs> okay. to mute it. Anywho, where were we? So the next question is from Zeranium or Xranium on Twitter. Uh, they ask, how was the shift for the writers from 22-minute episodes to 11-minute episodes? The honest answer is not something that anyone really wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, it wasn't a creative decision. It was basically one of those things where we got input from the outside networks, stuff like that. And um, the idea was, hey, we need to reinvent the show to some degree. What do we do? And at the time, the, the, the kind of major input was like, well, it seems like shorter format is taking off. In a, in a in a in a in a bigger way. And obviously, there was a lot of eleven-minute shows out, like like Gumball, uh, regular show, all those those mm. things, um, comedy shows, uh, basically. So that's why I think a lot of us were a little reluctant to the whole idea. Um, but then once we we said, okay, I guess that's the decision. Now we complain about it to each other we get that out of us our, our, our system and now we really lean into it and now we work with it and i i found it super liberating obviously because we were starting out with a new season with a new production company so it, it felt like it was a natural time to try out something like that but it also freed up a lot of our creativity that we wouldn't be able to do like oh yeah let's focus an entire episode on like paper boys or something like that something we wouldn't be able to do in the in 22 minute format so we really just leaned in and as i said once you've accepted something stop complaining about it and move on so we leaned into it and then we found our footing in that you know obviously we did some wild experience with different styles different ways of talk, storytelling while the different focus a lot of it was oh it's a little more comedy Maybe we can't go, go quite as, as deep in, in the story as we would like for this particular episode. However, we have double the amount of episodes, and it really keeps you on your toes because you got to be very concise with what you're doing in those 11 minutes. So they're like, you cut off the fat, and um, we had to find our ways to do it. But I, in, 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 the final, in the end, I, I think we really, really mastered that, that format especially with uh, Master of the Mountain and and, and, um, and beyond. Um, that's where I really felt like, yeah, this, this works for us. Uh, so I kind of grew very fond of uh, the 11-minute format. And, I, you know, I think anyone, everyone was a little reluctant in the beginning uh, or a lot reluctant, but we did it, and I think we pulled through, and I, I think we got a, a great and different show out of it. Um, so, yeah, not unhappy about that, but I do love the 22-minute format. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so the next question comes in from Javier98 over on Twitter, and he wants to know um, if you have any insights as to the reasons the uh, Day of the Departed was different in Chinese, because there was Ooh. obviously an alternate version of that produced. Uh, I do. I don't know how much I can actually get into it, um, but... The, um there, there are some cultural differences um that you have to be sensitive about and um and that's why there was also the idea that hey why don't we why, why don't we have a more um so obviously day of the part was produced by will film in denmark but why don't we also try to produce that out of denmark in a different way mm -hmm. see what sensibilities that break brings in and there are some sort of um when you especially when you're dealing with spirits and and ghosts and stuff like that that's something you have to be very aware of uh, in in uh, in in china um so i think there was something going into that i wasn't my, myself a lot a big part of that production i only did the the i did the the one with will film and then i wrote the opening scene 
the, the Chinese version of it, to sort of reintroduce the ninja because um, I, I'm not aware if they had actually had the Ninjago series in China before that. So this was a way to say, oh, let's quickly get to present these ninja in a way. Um, and obviously that's where some of the differences came, came in. And um, I don't think they say anything about spirits or anything like that. In um, in the Chinese or ghosts, I think that's one of there's probably a different uh, explanation why these guys come in. But I, you know, I don't speak Chinese. I, I don't actually really know about the details of it. But it was a very interesting experiment. Like basically, you have two production companies working with the same script, and then you can see, okay, what 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 interpretations came out of that. It's it's a very rare experience and an experiment and an interesting one. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, no, fair enough. Another interesting question from Ethan Ninja Never Quit on Twitter, who asks: Is there any season slash storyline from Ninjago you would change or clarify to help make things make a bit more sense in retrospect? Mm. bits here and there i'm mostly i'm mostly annoyed by continuity errors and stuff like that um uh, you know the uh, stuff that we didn't catch during production you know oh here's a shoulder plate missing or here's a here's a, a uniform that's changing ra randomly from one shot to shot that's just like oh why didn't we catch that what <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How negligent were we? But again, it's arrows show show up in different uh, processes when you're working with it. So it might actually have been right in the previous version where you really focused on image, uh, but now you're focused it's focused on sound, and now all, all of a sudden, for some reason that that has changed that image. But you are not focused on image right now. You're focused on sound, so you don't catch it as a, a, a error that that went in there. Um, in terms of story, I'm pretty happy with what we got. Um, obviously, there's always stories that you would have done or would have preferred. Um, but once you then start to work with a story, you sort of fell in love, fall in love with it a, a bit, and then it's like a it's like a kid getting its name. You know, even though it's a weird name, that's the name and that's their identity and that's what what they become. And then you wouldn't want to change it for anything. All right. Fair enough. Wonderful. Uh, next question comes from uh, Devi, or, or from the Keepers of Spinjitsu. Uh, Devi asks, hello, Tommy. I would like to ask, how do you work? Do you have a working plan like X, Y hours per day? Or is it more like now the creativity flows and I finish this plan? So is it, you know, a bit of chaos or a bit of both? It's a lot of chaos. Uh, obviously, we go into those workshops where now we're really in the zone and we're making stories. Uh, but I would say many of my most of my days are really unpredictable because I go to bed, uh, then I get up in the morning, then I see what what dropped into my mailbox overnight. Because I'm in Denmark, I work with production companies, writers in Los Angeles, uh, production companies in Canada, uh, in India. Um, so I'm I'm there as as both the you know producer, but I also it's in some way need to service these guys because they need my input to to be able to move on because I, I'm for some reason I've become the bottleneck of everything, uh, maybe because I'm so opinionated or dedicated or whatever it is. So my day is typically I get up, I don't get up super early, then I work. Then I have a few hours off, then I start working again, and then I go to bed, and then I get up in the morning, I start working immediately. So <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird cycle to do these uh, productions when there's these different time zones, zones all over the place. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a flow, but it's a, it's a very getting jerked around kind of flow. Um, but one thing I will say is um, when when uh, Marvelous Jen and I started doing the whole um, uh, the Splinter and the Blind Man's Eye thing, 
that was a process where we basically started brainstorming and and what we did was we actually recorded our brainstorms so i hope at some point we'll be able to release some of those videos because that does show a bit of the process of just failing your way forward into a story where it's like ooh 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 well, then why why don't we pair uh why don't we pair lloyd up with clemency then there could be some sort of confusion confusion about the green one and oh we got a body comedy thing now going um so i think if we ever release some of those videos they they will show uh they will at least show some way of of iterating on the story that might be interesting to people and it could be fun at some point to actually do like an online hey let's let's make a story together kind of podcast or something like that very cool a great very idea cool. Yeah. Our next uh, question comes from Ninja Bricks, and uh, he says this is a pr or he or she or uh, says this is a pretty broad question. But are there any story threads, character arcs, season ideas, concepts, characters, etc. that never got used that that haven't been shared yet that you'd like to share? And thanks for all you've done over the series for the past eleven years. Um. Yes, there's a there's a lot of ideas. Um. There are stories that are written that basically sit in a drawer, not really going anywhere. Um, some of them ha are pretty fully fledged, actually. There's great concepts in there. I'm a. I don't know what will happen with them. What I what I've kind of learned over the years is a, an idea never really dies. So you gotta kind of be careful uh, sharing an idea that we're thinking, ah, oh, well, it's not going anywhere. I might as well tell about it because these seem also to kind of have some sort of rebirth in a different format. Um, like what I was talking about with the, the, the Pythor thing, you know, about him being present in all scenes of Ninjago, just invisible. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, if I shared an idea like that because I thought it wasn't going anywhere, I would think I'd, I kind of blocked off that path and we wouldn't be able to do it the way we did it with Harumi. So... Yeah, they're they're great ideas. Um, you might not see them in the format they are in right now, which is just notes on a piece of paper. But hopefully, they will make it into something someday. Maybe it's used outside Ninjago. I don't know, but mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I have another question from Duck Bricks. Um, has there ever been anything mandated by Lego or the designers that affected the story that you personally initially didn't want or plan to include or you didn't want to happen? I mean, that, that happens all the time, but that's part yeah. of the game. Um, <laughs> but then, then what we do is we work with it and we have conversations. But basically, you know, if, if there's something that is like, this is, the, this is the toy we feel children will really want to get their hands on. I, you know, I wear different caps. I, I'm a story guy, but I'm also a bit of a marketer in some some way. So I definitely understand the value of, oh yeah, this this thing that the kids will love needs to be in the show in a wonderful, relevant, and awesome way. Um, then I see it as my responsibility to find a way to work that in organically to into the story. You know, it can be a frustrating process. Um, um, for instance, uh, we had a very, very hard time figuring out how to fit a, a Harumi's dragon. I uh, forget, forget the name. Oh, Chompy? Chompy, yeah. Oh, Chompy's dragon. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, um, and I think this is a good indication of the collaboration that's going on there because, oh, um, all right, so in the story, we made it a Vanya's dragon. Except However, like, yeah. A wonderful product is Wu on the back of a golden dragon. So how do we make that scenario happen in the show? Because we kind of want that to be... We want that scene that's going to be on the front of that wonderful box. We want that in the show. And then we, you know, we work with that. And then we make this wonderful scene of him flying in with all the gods of Shin Tower and crashing through, uh, through the skull dragon there. And so... It's 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 weird and it's 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 hard to work with, but it's it's also a lot of fun mm -hmm. figuring out those little things which we do, and obviously then sometimes it works out better than other times. Uh, 
think someone here may have an opinion about a, a mech or something like that that should belong to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm really i'm i'm waiting well, you know, to bring this up hey, we managed to find a way to get that thing half covered in lava so it kind of represents <laughs> what's on the, on the top you know there's a little thing about kai being there not being there but we did what we could what, what are you talking about <laughs> yeah I, I appreciate what the show did with the set i am not happy with the set for being the set but you know lj and i worked very hard and we have the the stone mech now so uh, and now whenever I see Kai in a mech and the whole Cole Kai thing, my vision just goes red. And that's, a, that's about red, it. Red, just like La the, the mech. Last, the last core wave was a mess, and I don't want to get into that. <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking about Cole's mech right here. No. No. <laughs> no. <Agony. laughs> Let's not get into this. <laughs> we We live in uh. agony. Yes. Set, Listen, set we'll story. get Legacy Master of the Mountain in like ten years, maybe. Maybe we'll do it right now. Legacy <laughs> Master oh my God, of the Mountain. They'll finally correct a... their mistakes and make the mech fully a... red. Can we get the Hulkbuster <laughs> size stone mech? Right. I think yeah, that's exactly yeah. what we all that's want. We all want that. Necessary. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, that that wraps up the uh, yeah, you know concept questions. We have uh, three final Twitter okay. questions for Tommy. These are more personal towards you. Uh, earlier in October, you announced your quote unquote retirement from Ninjago that this crystallized was your signature. And so these are some questions that kind of uh, go in line with that announcement and uh, kind of the sentimentality with Ninjago, this being quote unquote it for you. Um, LJ, would you like to ask the first question? Sure. Uh, so the first question comes from me, and it's, uh, what are the digits on your credit card and the three on the... Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Different kind of personal question. I, I understand. Okay. <laughs> you assume I actually have any money. <laughs> I don't... You put all this crap behind me. Yeah, no, that that's that's fair. Hey, you know what? If you want, I know there's something right above your head. I'm willing to buy it from you. I mean, I'm just... I'm just you know, I'm just putting it in the... <laughs> All right, so the first oh, personal question. We have to see what it is for the stream. Oh, my <laughs> God. For the stream. I'll, I'll, make oh, you, I'll make you a trade. I got some Ninjago sets I can give you. <laughs> <laughs> we will uh, discuss this on another, another oh, time. All right, thank, thank you, Dark Alleyway. All right, so... Personal questions. First one comes from Ronnie Wright at Ronnie Wright underscore 14, who asks, Tommy, when do you think Ninjago was at its lowest point? And when it was at its lowest point, in your opinion, do you think you and other producers of Ninjago did a good job at recovering from it? Let me know. And thanks for the hard work in the Ninjago community. In your lowest point... This is the first time I've seen him ponder so hard. This is, this is, a, this is a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Ninjago at a lowest point? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Can we move on? I'll have that running in the back of my mind. That works. It's, it's okay. a very hard question, actually. Um, I'm trying enough. to look back through 13 years of... I want to give a good answer to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my next one kind of similar but the other way around so maybe that's easier um it's from ruiz ruckus on twitter do you think there is a pinpointable moment in the past 11 years where ninjago reached its peak and if yes when was that in your opinion actually i'll combine that then because i think i have the answer now um when we did uh, Sons of Garmadon. I think anyone will agree that was a considerable leap forward. Yes. Um, yeah, it started to look better. The storytelling was on par. The Higgins were back. Uh, it was just firing on all cylinders. Uh, the music was wonderful. That was that was a result of uh, a collaboration gone wrong. Uh, between um, Willfield and one of the a vendor at the time. Um, so that's why I love Hands of Time. You know, it's it's not a perfect season. Um, and there are explanations why some of it isn't as great as it should have been. 
However, that what uh, what went out of um, hands of time is what pro propelled Ninjago forward to what it became with Sons of Garmadon. Mm -hmm. um, so, because Will Film had to figure out new ways to do this stuff, and that really just elevated the quality. Uh, and my God, it it was beautiful to watch it develop in that way. We also started working in, in different ways. Um, when we did our workshops, we basically rented out a house in, for I think, 10 days, where people from Will Film were there, the Hagemans were there, Braggy was there, Toy Designers were there, I was there, marketing people were there. And it was just like this great collaboration um, where everyone was just throwing in input, wild ideas, and then Hagemans were there to and uh, working with Braggy because Braggy was being brought on at that point, uh, just coming in with fresh perspectives. And that's how both uh, uh, Sons of Garmadon and Hunted was built it in one kind of very cool, uh, very intense session. And then obviously out of that also came uh, March of the Oni. Awesome. Yeah. That's a cool story that I don't think we've heard before. It's, that's, that, that's so inspiring to hear that there was a, a get together for everyone and that's how all of these ideas came to be. It's so cool. Ah. It was also like we were, we were coming off like, okay, there's a Ninjago movie, um, which is a, its own thing. So we knew we, we, we kind of had, we wanted to lean into some of those things from the movie. Like obviously the, the design was, uh, was a mandate thing, but again, mm -hmm. once you accept it, stop thinking about it and move on. Um, so, um, so we, we also wanted to, all oh, right, that's that wonderful design of, of Ninjago city from the movie. How can we, to our best, uh, abilities on the budget that we have, bring that over into the TV series. So we 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 are kind of building on the qualities of that movie and and just making the best use of that in the TV show. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there you go. Very cool. Very cool. Very nice. Well, I've got one final Twitter question from at Froggy Shade on Twitter. Uh, Froggy Shade asks, "Hey, Tommy." What about working on Ninjago will you miss the most? Thank you for all the work on the show and that I've grown up with. It means the world to me. Sad to see you go, and I wish for the best and whatever is next. Uh, I will I'll probably, I mean, I won't lie. It's been a chore working on Ninjago. <laughs> uh, when, when you work on something like that and you invest in, in, in you know in self in it, yourself in it it really it really takes your energy away and uh, it's something that is like you always have 10 percent of your brain churning away at some sort of problem in the background while you're doing other things I look forward to not having that at least with Ninja <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Understandable. Uh, it's going to be wonderful to get rid of that, but I'm really going to miss the the people and the way it develops, uh, because you know, getting up in the morning, seeing what designs has come in, as you know, I I may have, you know I've been part of briefing some some guys to do some designs, then they come in and then they just look incredible, and it's super easy to just say yes, approved, move on, go into 3D with that. Uh, the, the people at Wild Brain has been amazing. The Ninjago team is great to work with. You know, we have that good collaborate friction where it's like, yeah, but you know, we you you're always pulling in different direction, but we know how to get to the same point, and we always get to this uh, consensus where it's like, yeah, this is actually very good. This is what we should do. So I am gonna miss that, and then the, the, just especially I think tying up those crazy lore thing where you're drawing on something we did five years ago but now we make it make sense in a new way in some sort of revelation probably gonna miss that but um i'm still gonna want to finish those writing projects that i have going which is a way of the departed and splinter and the blind man's eye and and that's really an exercise in <laughs> Those books will only make sense to people who know everything about mm -hmm. Ninjago because it's it's pulling on so many threads. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drop it completely. And you know, 
this is the end of Ninjago working on the main series for me, but you will see me pop up in a few instances in the, in the year to come. In, uh, I am working on some projects um, which are sort of very loosely Ninjago related, but um, you'll, you'll see that when it gets there. It's, it's not the main series, it's something else. It's very meta. <laughs> and I think people are either like gonna meta. love it or be very upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome Very cool. well Very cool. Tommy that wraps up the questions that we pulled from Twitter obviously there's a lot more that if you want to go back not and technically true we did skip a few important ones we did skip a few from Crystallize just for the sake of time it's been almost three mm -hmm. hours for this stream so but obviously there is still quite a few on Twitter if we ever want to do this again Tommy of course just let us know um, you can obviously go back to people on to Twitter who've asked under that thread. Um, but those are kind of the big overarching ones. I want to quickly take a moment, um, at least speaking for all of us, to thank you, Tommy, for everything that you've done for Ninjago, all the battles that you faced, all of the big, you know, imaginative moments you've had, you know, maintaining as much as you can for this beautiful story. Uh, obviously, we are we are all here because of it. Uh, we all were raised by the story that you helped uh, fund and create and take care of for so long, and uh, we just all really really appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. I don't even know how to articulate like what an impact you've had on my life. Like my ninth and tenth birthday parties were both Ninjago themed, and obviously, <laughs> like I'm still here today, and it's just. You, the stories you created were like such a core part of my identity as a kid. Like I cannot thank you enough for that. Yeah, I, yeah, and I, I just I I want to take thank you for, for saying so. It's very nice and very heartwarming. And I, I I don't always say it because I can say it so many times, but the Jago is really really a product of a lot of people. I you know I see myself as the caretaker of Nijago for that period. Uh, but we were a bunch of people that created it together. Um, and mm -hmm. I've just been the one that's that stuck around. And I think that's probably what's giving me a, a status on this. That's, that might be a little undeserved. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, it's, I've, I've definitely lived this <laughs> probably a little more than I should have. So I think it's going to be very nice to kind of sit back and just take a breather. Mm -hmm. And then I am very open to uh, new things. To come from Ninjago, and I'm looking forward to that. And I think that's that's I think that's part of what the mindset of anyone should have. It's uh, there's there's a million different ways to do this thing, and I think it is about hey, you got a you got a writing team, just trust them. Uh, they they're gonna they're gonna come up with something that's gonna blow out um, blow everyone's socks off. Um, you know, I think the Ninjago community in general isn't they're not afraid of new they're they're just afraid of different yeah and i think that's 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 something we see i i feel i've seen several times it's like oh yeah but different isn't bad you yeah. uh, just give it a chance always give it a chance um mm -hmm. um so that that's i think that would be my kind of advice and then hey you just if you see something don't that doesn't you don't feel makes sense Try running it, running it through your brain, and I think that that I example with the wind dragon. I think, ah, see, it, I think that's a good <laughs> explanation. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there's probably a way to kind of rationalize a lot of the things, unless you have a complete uh, contradiction somewhere, and we try not to do those. No. Yeah. You are currently getting a lot of thanks on YouTube. If you ever wanted to go back and check the chat, I think almost everybody has said their thanks to you, Tommy, on YouTube, on the YouTube chat. Um, now, as a surprise to, I, I guess it's a surprise to the uh, people here, but mostly to people in YouTube, we do have a super special guest who is joining us, who has a surprise for Tommy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to reintroduce Joshua Deck. Welcome, Josh. Who hasn't absolutely hasn't Hello. been here this whole time. 
Hello, I've been here this whole time. <laughs> we love super special guest Joshua Day. <laughs> oh, fuck. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I was uh, I was watching the YouTube, uh, waiting for my like picture to pop up, and I was like, wait a minute, it's not gonna happen for a while, so I just, I just start talking now. That's that twice I saw earlier, and I thought I was going mad. It's like, what what was that? <laughs> yeah, what's up? I saw I saw that. Court. You're lurking in the background. Hi, Josh. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you again. So Josh has something that he would like to uh, present and show you, Tommy. Something he's been working on for a very, very, very long time. Josh, the floor is yours. Awesome. All right. So, um, Tommy, you've been working on this show for about 12 years now. And I felt that it was, uh, it was appropriate for me to give something back to you that was uh, I, not even similar in scale, but as close as I could make it um, to what you've done. So um, presenting, uh, how do I present this on the stream, by the way? Stream it. Yep, whenever okay. you're ready to transfer. Awesome. Uh, first off, I'm gonna share this little, uh, this little, this little movie, I guess. Epic little little movie. Yeah, it's only a minute twenty, but it just kind of shows like what I've been working on for the past uh, about two or three months, I think. So here we go. It's a little bit of progress. <laughs> just absolute insanity. <laughs> Holy! Yes, we did some master. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and and wait, it's not done yet. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the magnum opus. <laughs> <sighs> I love Zippy. <laughs> oh, that's Makra. <laughs> Clutch powers made it into it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Everyone is here. Everyone is here. <laughs> Near nearly every character from every piece of media um that ninjago has produced from the short stories uh that that you have created um obviously the show um the legacy shorts uh Spinjitsu brothers garmadon everybody is here and uh um, wow. yeah after this i'm going to be posting on twitter so for those your twitter here, my <laughs> twitter twitter.com uh, for those of you who uh, who can't see it, because it's really tiny on the screen right now, um, you'll be able to see it better. Yeah. <laughs> when I, I ask, like, what is your Twitter? Oh, it's it's Joshua D underscore seventeen, or just Joshua Vic. There you go. Yeah. That is oh. amazing, and what a nightmare. <laughs> thinking about the process of putting this together and all the choices you would have to make along the way yeah it was bad um especially like since crystallize came out and then i had to add more characters to it <laughs> wow i look so much forward to diving into all the details of this and you know, i love it's like those human interpretations of the characters Mm -hmm. This is completely your piece of work. That is what? incredible. Willis12 in the Patreon chat asks the real question, but is the rat there? No. <laughs> the rat's not important. Zero out of ten. You, you, oh, it's all, all or nothing. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. No, I, no. not only is the rat there, but the rat is there twice because Mustake is there. Oh. oh. <laughs> 
is is the red R Rodrigo or the one with the glowing yellow eyes? <laughs> it's the glowing eyes rat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead we and turn on the sure stream that... and let's get Sakota back in here. All right. Man. Wow. Uh, yeah, well, you obviously don't have the budget constraints I have, so good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All the elemental masters are there, and I, you don't have to listen to these guys complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, how does Griffin Turner do a spinjitsu burst? <laughs> <laughs> Is there an elemental master of uh, elemental temple of speed somewhere in Yagi? <laughs> Highway. <laughs> I like to think if he stood in the middle of a NASCAR track, he could probably do it. <laughs> oh, well, wonderful, wonderful work, Josh. You gotta start yeah, selling those. Well. You do. Thank you. Oh, I, I can't wait for everyone to see all the details, especially you, Tommy, to see every little detail you've put in there. It is truly one of the best pieces that Josh has done. I think it's so. like 250 characters. Yeah. It's think, amazing. Wow. That's like and it, about a tweet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's that's a good joke. That's a good joke. Well, is there uh, anything else anyone would like to say before we end? Thank you so much for everything, yeah, man. Thank it's you. Been, uh, yeah. One heck of a journey. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. For all the time you spend with the community, you went always mm -hmm. went above and beyond, and. <laughs> I think we're all so incredibly grateful. Yeah, yeah we kind of um, we kind of said it in our in our crystallized podcast at the start, but like, especially for like El, you know LJ and I going back to the initial videos we made like eight years ago, it was a it was a big deal because we were still kind of grieving after Bionicle, and we were like, well, how do we find our place in the community? And Ninjago just kind of popped <laughs> into existence at the right <laughs> moment, and it uh, mm -hmm. it did a lot of good um did a lot of good for us as lego fans so thank you so much thank yeah. you I, I appreciate that and it's like well i mean lego supported this thing and uh, <laughs> yeah. it's 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 prevailed over time and uh, like lots of thanks to you you guys and the community for keeping it alive because that was the linchpin back in the day it was like Oh, this thing ended because that was the way we did it back then. You know, it's uh, mm -hmm. we love these things, and then we move on to something new. Um, and you know, it wouldn't be here today if if that hadn't been <laughs> a loud minority that really just didn't want to let go of it. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think democracy democracy was well served, and the people's people's <laughs> voices brought it back. Um, the people wonderful. have spoken. So I think well thank you again, Tommy. Obviously. Yeah, we go you. we go back a while. I've been I've been waiting, you know, to ask the real final important question, as you know you can expect from me. And mm -hmm. I know we go back a long way, back when Meso and I started bullying you about Legends of Chima and <laughs> who knows, maybe maybe we'll do it again. We'll see what the future holds. But if there's one thing that really sticks out to me over all these years, it's it's definitely how much you've interacted with people, how much you've worked with yeah. the community, how much you've tolerated uh, people asking which ships are canon and which are not for however many years. <laughs> and, you know, seeing you work on different projects with individuals, like, you know, a heavy community integration. Because, like, Meso and I, for example, we're very used to that. You know, our home community, uh, the the heralding author was very involved in the community. And I guess that, that brings me to, to the last question. When are we going to write our story about Kareth? All right. Dareth's secret son, <laughs> the beige ninja. All right. The ninja of hot air. Okay. I'm just saying, listen, it starts out in Jamanakai village, right? <laughs> he's there. He's an orphan. Okay. He doesn't know who his father is he's because let's be honest. All right, Dareth, he's, he's a party orphan. animal, literally <laughs> a party orphan, animal. Okay. But, but, but listen, he finds beige robes, a beige ninja outfit in a crate under a bed. And he's like, what does this mean? And he dons it. And he, he finally realizes his true potential. It's to be the greatest karaoke musician on the planet. <laughs> 
and he becomes the ninja of karaoke. What's up? No, it's it's a, it's a very very good idea. Hey, I will uh, make sure that it is brought to the creators of. <laughs> All right, fantastic. It has been. Thank pitched. you. There we go. Excellent. Have... And yeah. and. and... They may have now. to move it slightly on the direction they're get going. I'm not sure that was what they were going for, but I yeah, can definitely see what kind of merit that idea has. Okay, fantastic. I mean, listen, <laughs> like, if they need any help, like, I, I can definitely help, like, with the vocal direction of Kareth. All right, I know oh, Kareth yeah, yeah. as though... Vocal I know Kareth as though he were my own son, okay? I, I, I've been thinking about this since I was born, but, all right? This is the story right, that the world out. needs. It's the get story back, the world the needs. Line. They okay. need it. They <laughs> need this story. They need it. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Legend of the 24 Carrot Ninja. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Carrot, uh, Carrot is Mr. E confirmed, is what you're saying. Don't you dare. That's why he was the, the only MVP. thing that's going to be canon from this. It's going to be that. So now, what happens if we tune in next year and this is actually what happens? <laughs> wait, wait a second. <laughs> um, we got to end the stream, guys. We've been going a while. <laughs> the new Ninjago writers be like, hmm, that's a great idea. <laughs> I love Kareth and Brie. <laughs> oh, well, that is where we're going to wrap up today. I want to once again thank uh, Ninja Whip, Brayden, and uh and mind for joining us and helping us ask some questions and moderate this and obviously want to thank tommy for being here as well uh letting us be the moderators and asking you the questions that i'm sure you love answering all the time um and uh bringing some good discussion to the table about ninjago and again if you ever want to do this again if you ever want to reopen that box you're more than welcome to come and we'll do this again but you are now moving on. You are taking the teapot and you're walking into the sunset. And we are all here cheering you on. Cheering on Tommy. Let's go to Tommy. Woo! But wait, but wait. <laughs> you got to do it, though. You got to give us literally one last spin. Oh, yeah. Give it, yeah, give it <laughs> spin, Tommy. You got to jump up, kick back, whip around, and... Yeah! There we go. <laughs> Give us a bow, Tommy. Thank you for all the questions. Thanks for the great interactions. It's been it's been it's been something. <laughs> <laughs> it's been something. Well, thank you all. Thank you all so much for watching in the YouTube chat. Uh, we appreciate it, and uh, we will see you all next time. And of course, check out the wonderful uh, creators. Uh, Bricks by Mind and Master Jiper Jitsu. Um, we'll add their uh, YouTube channels and whatnot in the description. If it, I think it's already there, so you can check them out there. Um, thank you guys for being here with yeah, us. Thank you it for was being a fun here. Time. Yes. Very fun. And we uh, will catch you all next time on Ninjago Cast. LJ, hit the music. Hit it. All right. And we'll jam out. We don't have to do like goodbye, everyone. We don't say our names again. We're all just, we'll just jam. Pretend we hear the music. <laughs> Thanks for joining, everybody. Oh, we gotta get the sticks. Get our mini figures. Get our stuff. We got children. Uh, 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 I don't have a mini figure. I have Mario and uh, <laughs> yeah. some Harumi figure. <laughs> Woo. This is Thank great. You joining, it, everybody. This looks great on stream, but it, like in the call, we're it all just a bunch so of lunatics right now. <laughs> <laughs>